Hello, everybody, and welcome to the One Nation of Gamers feature number five. $6,000 prize pool up for grabs for these, as well as the very last spot for that PAX Prime Finals. The eighth and final person being decided who's going to compete for $25,000. I am Nathan. That's Admiral Zamora, joined again by the Tannen Grace. Tannen, we had a great day yesterday. How are you feeling today? A little more well rested and a little excited to watch some Hearthstone, man. I'm uh, there's a lot of priests on the screen right now. I'm getting kind of confused. Sorry, I was getting excited. I was like, did someone find Ben Burroughs' deck or whatever? But <laughs> anyway, any day I get to cast a view, Nathan, is a good day in my book. So I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, same. Thank you very much. Um, yeah. So uh, just to cover exactly what's going on right now, Ratsma uh, has has yet to submit and has yet to show up for his match. Um, so he has a little bit more time to go. But if he can't find a way to get here. Uh, he will be uh, be getting a, a match loss for that one and be moving down into the lower bracket. Well, again, he'll have some time to show up. Uh, so we're taking a few moments uh, just to see if he can actually make sure he shows up for this one. So uh, recapping what's happened so far, 10 opens have taken place for a $1,000 prize pool. Four features so far have happened with $6,000 prize pools. The way you get into the features is either you, you win one of the open events or you accumulate enough Geico points by playing in the open events that you qualify directly for the feature tournament. If you win the feature tournament, you get qualified for that $25,000 final at PAX Prime, as well as the two leaders in Geico points over the entire circuit. So, so far qualified, we have Eversiction, Shoop, Dog, Frozen, and Dakota. And the point winners are Chalky and Phone Taps. Those players are secured 100%, no matter what, they're going to that final. The thing we're looking for now is who's going to win today, take on that prize pool, and get that last slot. That's the big one we're looking for right now. So, uh, you know, really important, I think, for Ratsma to show up to this match. It'd be really a shame to, to have the disqualification take place. But it is what it is uh, right now. So we're kind of waiting on that one to get going from there. Um, so, so as far as I, I wanted to ask turn, you, nothing to say. I, yeah, I wanted to ask you, do you think this is like an elaborate plan from Ratsma to build up suspension maybe? You know, he's like, I'm going to miss my first match and have to, you know, be the underdog the rest of the time, come from the loser's bracket. It just it just makes a better story when he wins it all in the end. <laughs> no, I don't think it's his plan. Okay. Uh, probably probably <laughs> something getting in the way. I mean that's just you know, life gets in the way sometimes and uh you can't you can't always be there to to make it happen. So uh hopefully he does show up. If not, hopefully he shows up for his next match. But if that's if it's not the case, uh Battlefrog will be getting a match win for this one. So I uh, you know as much as he would love to play the match, you know, you'll take your wins pretty much any way you can get them. Uh, at this point, let's talk a little bit about yesterday and some of the changes that we actually saw from, uh, I'd say, a couple weeks in, in the past. So the first one that was really big was that Dragon Warrior, while it was a very powerful deck, hasn't been performing well over the last couple weeks. Um, are people just suddenly adjusting to this deck right now, or do you think we're just kind of seeing the other side of the variations with the deck where you don't have a strong curve, and as a result, you kind of fall behind? I think the answer is just yes to both of those. I think you're starting <laughs> to see the format change a little bit. And maybe, you know, Dragon Warrior isn't the strongest deck like it was a few weeks ago. And then I think we're seeing the other side of variants as well. You know, some of the draws uh, that we've seen have not been the best. You know, we've seen these guys. Uh, I mean, I watched a match of Firebat earlier this week where he literally did nothing for like the first five turns of the game and just got, you know, steamrolled. And that happens sometimes when you have eights and nines and tens in your deck and stuff. And so um, the question I want to ask you about it is, do you think it's maybe, you know, a flash in the pan kind of deck. It's just one of those really good ladder decks that just can't, you know, transition the same into tournaments. I don't think it is. I mean, I, I picture sort of like the Druid of old where players would go on sprees and not drawing wild growth and not drawing innovate. And so you're having to operate on a natural heavy curve and uh, it just, it doesn't work that way. Uh, so Dragon Warrior, I think is still very strong, but there's a lot of variations of where they're strong. And we may start to see kind of the end of it with, a new adventure right on the horizon. Uh, I believe all the cards are being spoiled tonight. Ooh, and, uh, I didn't know that. And within six days, the first wing is going to come out. So stuff's going to start shaking up. I mean, you know how the adventures work. One of the classes usually takes a lead at that. And then after mm -hmm. all the adventures released, it kind of starts to even itself out. Uh, so let's take, go ahead and take a look at the brackets and see what we have up for today. Group A is what we'll be playing. Uh, tomorrow will be Group B. And then on the last day, we'll have uh, those from the... Finals actually end up playing off for this one. So Ratsma, Battlefrog, VX14, and Fatalocity are going to be in this one. Um, and and this is a bracket that I'm not really too familiar with. We did see Fatalocity win the Open the other day. Ratsma, of course, a very popular streamer, part of Tempo Storm. And Battlefrog and VX14. Battlefrog, we also did see him play yesterday. Uh, it showed a lot of emotion in the match that he was playing. I mean, sometimes he was kind of 
almost giving the I give up sort of look before the game was over and ended up drawing a couple key cards and just really got into it. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what? I, I don't mind seeing emotion from guys. I love seeing it, actually, especially in, you know, this kind of tournament, you know, yesterday with the Open. It was such a big deal because this was their last chance to get into this feature. And yeah. it's worth so much more than the $500 prize pool. I'm sorry, the $1,000 prize pool that was uh, given away yesterday. You know, these guys get to do get to do this tournament. And then if you are lucky enough to win this one, you get all the way to PAX Prime. That's a lot on the line for just a few games of Hearthstone. I mean, this is the best open series out there. So, I mean, I, I can't wait to try to compete in this myself next year. <laughs> well, it's, it's if you're not casting, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, so, word from the admin. Um, Ratsman has not shut up for his match. Uh, he's going to be giving a match loss for it. We cannot delay any longer. We've done as much as we can at this point. Uh, we'll be moving down to the lower bracket. Not of it yet. If he happens to show up, uh, he can show up. Until then, it's VX14 and Fatalocity will be the next match that we're moving on to. So, unfortunate, but the rules are the rules, and we have to move on with the show. Uh, so, we're getting player bans in at the moment, so we'll have the screen updated as quickly as we possibly can. Uh, but Fatalocity was a player that ended up taking a series pretty decisively in the finals of, of the Open that he won. And if he could continue the kind of play that he had in that particular series, that's something that can really put you in a position to win a big string of tournaments. I mean, you do have to get a little bit lucky. You do have to bring the right builds. But the, the play is sort of the foundation for it. If you're not playing well, you're really minimizing your chances. And as much as I don't want to harp on Dude7597 for this, um, I like to give him a hard time at the same time, too. Uh, he really slipped up in some spots yesterday mm -hmm. and cost himself some percentage points. And whether or not that would have actually changed the outcome is another story. But it's an example of where you could increase your percent chance to win. And that can quite literally change the entire series. Yeah, I 100% agree with you. You know, we kind of, uh, we kind of gave a debate velocity a little bit, you know, because it was, it, there was never one, you know, big glaring mistake. It was just a, a couple little things here and there, like you said, you know, giving up little percentage points. And, uh, we found out, you know, one of them was just a misclick, which, you know, who hasn't done that at some point in time in Hearthstone? I know I've made some big blunders in big spots. And, you know, some other times it might have been nerves. You know, he said he was a little bit nervous. And uh, so I wanted to tell you this, Nathan. He actually tweeted at me this morning, uh, Fatalocity did, and he said that his lineup was made for me. So I'm expecting to see a lot of Yogg today in yeah, this lineup. Yeah, if that's the case, <laughs> I would definitely expect the same thing. Um but yeah, I, I'm in the same boat with you. It's a lot of like small little mistakes that he was mm -hmm. making at times, like playing very conservatively. Right. Where I think aggressive play was very warranted given the situation. Um, and conservative play is not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, yeah. there's more than one way to play the game. The question is going to be which one ends up winning more for you. So bands are in. Lineups are ready. VX14 has his warrior band away, has Druid, Paladin, and Priest remaining. Uh, very unique looking lineup. And Fatalocity yeah. has his mage band away. He's playing with Druid, Paladin, and Shaman. So two Paladins... <laughs> In this series, I mean, I know that there was a player who had reached, I believe, top 10 on all three servers with a variation of Secret Paladin, but I, I don't know about that deck. I mean, that, every time I feel like I play against it, it just, the turns aren't really there. And even mm -hmm. the Mysterious Challenger, like, now that the Avenge is gone, I feel like I just don't fear it anymore. Yeah, I mean, Avenge being gone is, I mean, that, that, was, the, that was the one secret that really broke every game wide open. But, I mean, looking at these two lineups, I'm shocked. Not only do we see you know, Paladin on both sides. We see a priest in this lineup and a mage. Like, what, what's going on? You know, what is this? Is this last season? And, <laughs> well, mate. You know, and, you know, like, you got to wonder what Paladin is it? Is it secret, like you said? I got to believe maybe one of them is. Maybe it's more, you know, Flood Paladin. I think what people like to call it, I like to call it Aggro Paladin or just Get You With Divine Favor Paladin. You know, a bunch of one and twos. And Divine Favor is a really messed up Hearthstone card in certain spots, especially in slower metas. That card is unbelievable and game-changing every time you play it and you know is there a chance we see something like Nazoth Paladin I mean that was the first big deck to come out in standard you know I mean I felt like I played that or played against it every other game at the beginning of standard and you actually got really sick of that deck really fast well the th another big story here is the fail Aussie just doesn't have warrior in his mm -hmm. in his initial four lineup that is already very strange to me I mean warrior is considered the most powerful deck right now and one of the reasons it's considered the most powerful is the wide range of decks that you can choose for it mm -hmm. um, so curious to see how his build is actually directed it does look like two Nazoth paladins from here i mean wow. harrison jones and Tyrion, an opening hand for vx14 and the forbidden healing and aldor peacekeeper plus Tyrion for fatalocity mm -hmm. i think we're in for a long game here boys 
Yeah, strap in. This is going to be like the beginning of Standard where we had two-hour matches. Uh, it may not be that bad, obviously, but yeah, I was about to ask you, Admirable. I th- it's been a while since I've seen these matches, but I'm pretty positive you keep Harrison Jones in this matchup. Uh, you know, that's something I, I'm really curious about because here's the other thing, too. They don't really know what the other Paladin is. Right. This but, is right I mean, out the gate. We have no, They have no information. And, and it, like you just mentioned Divine Favor. Uh-huh. If you keep Harrison Jones and your opponent's actually playing Divine Favor, you're probably pretty messed up. VX yeah, you're 14, probably going to die. This is really interesting. Now he draws a copy of Kodo, which isn't too unstandard, I'd say, for Solar Paladin builds, but the Mind Control tech. If you start seeing a couple weird cards here and there, this could very well be Arena List. Yeah, this is very likely a Arena List as well, like you said. And it's very interesting. There's an Acidic Swamp Ooze on the other side as well, too. So there's a good chance that in a Rally Blade, there's a chance that either one of these players could be playing like Reno Nazoth Paladin. There's a, there's oh. a very good shot that we're going to see something crazy in this game. Yeah, I'm guessing that that um, that on Fatalocity side, the Acidic Swamp Ooze was something that Chalky favored. Uh, he didn't mm-hmm. want the card draw as much. He just wanted the utility of the card. And Rally Blade is one of those cards that I think is a pretty solid three-drop just right. in its own respects. I mean, the ability to play it and start attacking like, Tunnel Trogs or Feral Spirits, Tusker Totemic, stuff like that, the extra turn on that uh, in terms of discounted cost makes a big difference. So unless we started seeing some really strange cards in Fatalocity, I'd say not. But Mind Control Tech is the one that's really piquing my interest. I mean, that is a, an incredibly uncommon card in this metagame. I 100% agree with you. And, you know, to kind of go back to your earlier point about keeping the Harrison Jones, since we just, you know, keep referencing it with the Acidic Swamp Ooze, and you see VX14 keeping Harrison in his opening hand, um, I, I 100% kind of agree with this play. Even though it could be an aggro pound on the other side, I would assume he's done some research on his opponent and kind of knows at least a little bit about Fatalocity. Uh, with the Crazy Alchemist draw, Nathan, I think you hit the, the nail on the head right away. But yeah. with what we've seen from Fatalocity, he's... He's the kind of guy that strikes me as, I'm going to do things my own way and not just listen to what everybody else is saying. I'm going to make my own kind of decks and, you know, sometimes have some some oddball choices. And I think you can kind of put him on not being playing, you know, a super aggressive version of Paladin here. I, I think it's one of the guys you could really think that, yeah, he's going to be playing one of these super slow Paladin decks. I mean, given what we've seen in the past, it's not like a ton of, of example, but I could, I could tend to agree with that. The fact that... that um Tempo Mage, I think, was really the only truly aggressive build mm-hmm. that he had brought last time. And not only that, but he played it really conservatively. <laughs> yeah, as well. to say that, the yeah. style of play, I think, is really what's more telling about that. Yeah, he definitely seems like the more cautious kind of control player at heart. And, you know, you mentioned that, you know, he didn't play aggressively in spots where you would have liked, where you and I both would have liked to have seen him push, you know, for more damage and do more stuff. And, you know, you kind of, it's, it's hard to fault the guy. Like you said, it was probably like the, one of the biggest matches of his life at the time. Nerves get involved, and when you know you get in that kind of situation, people don't want to make a mistake, so they definitely play closer to the vest and make you know safe plays instead of sometimes which are just generally better plays. Yeah, Loot Hoarder's going to join the hand as well. That's certainly been a popular choice in the Zoth builds lately. Just try yep. to power cycle a little bit, get those <clears throat> yeah, extra great. couple of card draws when you play the Zoth. Yeah, a great card, early minion. You know, you can fight for the board with it. You can get some damage in. It draws you a card. It replaces itself. Plus, not a bad one to get off and is off uh, at the end of the game because in the Paladin deck, you don't have too many Death Rattle minions, but the ones that you have are very, very good. You know, you have, like, Sylvanas. You know, you have Tyrion and stuff like that, but there's not a lot of, like, early game stuff. And I like the Loot Hoarders. Like you said, it just power cycles through the deck. Fatalocity's been really taking his time. Yeah, he was a pretty deliberate player the last time we saw him, and this is a much slower deck than some of the stuff that we've seen him play before, and I dare say this is one of the slowest decks in in all of Hearthstone, so I have a feeling we're in for a long game. You know, is this something that gets to you in a match sometimes if your opponent plays... You know, it takes forever on every one of their plays. Is it, do you ever feel it kind of rattles you a little bit or gets you out of your game? Um, not for well, me particularly. I mean, for some players, it's definitely the case. Yeah, I mean, I, I think Reno is nailed on this list. Yeah. There's interest Coliseum's in here. Mind Tech, Crazy Alchemist. Like, some of these cards just don't even make sense, really, yeah. um, given the rest of the context. So, let's see where this goes. VX14, he's looking a little bit flustered, I'd say. I mean, maybe there's a history between these two players, but... Yeah, maybe they've played each other in Open Cups before. 
it looks like v, uh, VX14's deck right now, it looks like he went in, started making a Paladin deck, and then just got, like, sick of it halfway through and just let it auto-fill. <laughs> Would you you know? Would you like you know? Would you like the program to fill in your deck for the rest of you? Yeah, sure. Click yes. Submit this deck. I mean, it looks like a pretty solid draft to me. <laughs> it's a good arena deck. <laughs> I mean, Ratsmo was in the was in the competition tonight, so maybe it was like a gentleman's agreement between a couple of them that everybody has one arena deck in their lineup. <laughs> You're really big on the gentleman's agreement stuff. <laughs> oh yeah. Anything to add that extra layer to tournaments, Nathan? Anything. I feel like you. I feel like every time we cast, like you mentioned some weird gentleman's agreement. <laughs> yeah. Like maybe they just agreed to not attack face. I'm like, no, no, that <laughs> didn't happen. That's never happened. I'm just trying to give people the benefit of the doubt. I'll give you the. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. Oh boy. Here's a benefit of the doubt for you. All right. How aggressive do you want to be in this spot? Like, how important is coin? You're gonna you're gonna draw extra cards with Harrison Jones at some point. You want coin out of your hand. Are you going to get a better target than this than this uh, one one here? Well, I don't know. I might have thought about Kodoing. If he's got like Aldor or Humility in the build, he, he for sure has those. It. I mean that that's like that's like one of your hard removal spells is Kodo yeah. and, and Humility. So in the, in this matchup, I mean you expect it to go long. Mm -hmm. I'm not wanting to waste it. The invested Torin might be enough to mm -hmm. convince me, but. Outside of that, I mean, it's, it'd be really tough to Kodo a 1-1, especially coin Kodo 1-1. No, I, mean, I definitely is, agree with you. This is the I slow just, game. Buckle yeah, in. I was, just trying to, yeah, I was just trying to say, there's nine cards. Sorry for talking over you. There's like nine cards in his hand already, and you're not going to get rid of many of these over the next few turns. So it's, I think it's something you should at least think about or consider, but I, I, it's probably better just to wait till next turn where you can just pay five mana for Kodo. You don't have to give up the coin. Because coin of Wild Pyromancer is actually pretty good, too. I would just love to know what Fatalocity is thinking about. Hot Pockets. <laughs> See that workout equipment back there? I guess they eat Hot Pockets. Yeah, you're right. Do they still make Hot Pockets? Do they still make? That's like one of the gamer classics, man. Oh, okay. It's like Mountain Ooh. Dew and Hot Pockets, right? Just a card. Oh, that's a very nice draw. Yeah, That's a really important card in these kind of matchups. Um, we saw... You know, Chalky actually make this. I mean, I think this was one of the cards that won him DreamHack Austin. Was it? You know, everyone was playing this off Paladin, but he had uh, just a car in his deck, and it's so good in so many matchups. Like, I tell you right now, if I'm playing against Paladin and I'm a Warrior class and they play just a car, that's my nightmare. Yeah, I'm just gonna go for the Kodo here. Does not want anything to be challenged by the blade just yet. And I think that Harrison may quite literally be aimed at a at an Ashbringer. That would not surprise me to see from VX14. You know, given the way that his build is so far, it looks like that he is very ready for the long game. You know, when we yeah. there's just card in here. Harrison Jones, uh, Andrew the Coliseum. I mean who knows what other kind of crazy tools are going to be in here. This is this is a pretty greedy build so far. Yeah, and that's a really good point actually. That's actually a really common uh play line in the Paladin on Paladin uh control matchup. It's not something you see a lot. Uh, nowadays, but one of the very common play lines was to just plan for, uh, you know, the turn 10 turns from now where you're going to have to kill uh, your opponent's Tyrion and you wait till you're going to be able to kill it on turn and play Harrison Jones so they don't get any of the Ashbringer effect. And it's like gaining 15 life almost. You know, getting yeah. rid of an entire Ashbringer is pretty insane in these matchups. You also get the card draw. That's something that I'm going to be really curious about to see, too, is where the players tend to go with the card draw. I mean, there's a chance that Fatal is not playing this loot order because he has something like Fatigue in mind. Mm -hmm. wow, and I don't play this turn. This is really interesting. Yeah, he's definitely already playing for the Fatigue game. And this is something that you see sometimes in Hearthstone, but... You almost never see it this early in a game. I, I, it harkens back to like Freeze Mage versus Control Warrior strategies, or back when it was Control Warrior versus Control Warrior, and you would see players just not shield block in yeah. in, in turns and float three mana. Because like I just don't want to draw an extra. What's that? Even prior to Elise, that was happening. Yeah. Now here's the deal: Fatalocity has run into the Justicar, so his game plan may not work out. I mean, that card is brutal. In the long game, you get so much extra value from the hero power that that might be the signal that he has to start making something happening. Mm -hmm. And so how long that'll take, that's another story. But 
something is going to have to give. If he tries to play the long game here, I mean, we're talking, it could just end up ending because of the way that it's been played. Just yeah, simply I mean, from the extra 1-1s. One yeah, I was going to say, just hero power is a lot of pressure in this matchup now because you do oh, have some good... Monster. Yeah, I know. Right? Look at his hand. His hand is... Such a motley crew of just every Paladin card. It's like this deck is Paladin cards I own. He literally just went through his Paladin collection. It's like, <laughs> I'll, take one, I'll take one of these. I'll take that one. Oh, enter the Coliseum. That seems cool. I can see this card being good. Yep, we're going to get a lot of information this turn, I think, about where VX14 wants to go with this. And I honestly don't mind the Ragnaros Light Lord. This continues the pressure. It heals up the Kodo out of the range of the Rallying Blade. This may begin to force some action from your opponent. You know, he's got so many tools in his hand. Right now, he just goes, this is like kind of a test with the Ragnaros. Can you handle this effectively? Yeah, you know, I kind of like this play. He's got a ton of cards in his hand. It's not like he's going to run out of gas anytime soon. He's got the enhanced hero power. So if you're making Fatalocity just be on the back foot for the rest of the game, your hero power is eventually just going to wear him down. He's not going to be able to answer it every single time. Yeah, this is going to be a rough one for Fatalocity. It was a strong play. I mean, the, mm -hmm. the one thing it, I think he doesn't want to do is use an equality quite this early. Yeah, I mean, does he have to, though? I mean, is just playing Sylvanas good enough on this board? Well, Sylvanas is one of those cards where it's best used against Tyrion mm -hmm. to try to ensure that steel, you know, like playing Sylvanas and then equality or Wild Power Mancer equality can kill everything and then force the Tyrion steal. So he's going to give up the equality to start. Says that Ragnaros Lightlord is too big of a threat. And this is... I mean, I imagine this is a great turn for the Infested Tauren. He's going to forego it, though. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. Yeah, well, I, I understand not playing the Loot Hoarder earlier. I'm trying to think of why you wouldn't play the Turian here. You try not to give away that you're in a Zoth Paladin. I think your opponent has already kind of figured that out. Yeah, I'd be pretty surprised if VX14 did not think it was a Zoth Paladin at the moment. So we've still yet to see a duplicate out of VX14's deck. Yeah, and he did, definitely just saw a mind control tech. I wonder if he's kind of going down the same thought process that you did when you saw this card. And you know, that's kind of an oddball choice here. I haven't seen that card in the metagame in a long time. You know, am I, is this like Nizoth Paladin with a Reno in it? You know, am I playing just a straight Reno list? What's going on here? Well, that Sylvanas is looking okay. Yeah, that's a pretty I'll, early I'll tell you in. what. Keeper of Voldemort doesn't look too bad here either. He could run in the 1-1, one, one, Keeper of Voldemort, run in the Mind Control tech, and then Harrison Jones, but the problem with that is the, the space in his hand. It's just not there. Mm -hmm. So wide on the board, it is. And Fatalocity, this is probably going to be the turn where he's got to load up and hope that that Sylvanas Steel does not take the Tyrion. Yeah, and so there, this is actually interesting. It's like you said, with the extra draws, it's kind of important because <clears throat> VX14 would get into fatigue way sooner and Fatalocity, because he's refusing to draw extra cards, and if you do something like Harrison to draw three more, that's a lot of extra damage. But he actually has a lot of pressure in this game as well. You know, this board is actually pretty threatening against the Tyrion, plus you have this hero power that's going to whittle him down, so if there's a spot to be aggressive with the Harrison, I don't hate it here, because you can kind of back it up with even more pressure and kind of run Fatalocity out of stuff very quickly. Well, Fatalocity is the one with his back against the wall first. Mm -hmm. You know what? If that Tyrion gets stolen, that's going to be a lights out. And not necessarily because of the Ashbringer, but because his Nazoth is not going to be bringing back a Tyrion. Yeah, that's actually a really good point. It's a problem. <clears throat> that's one of the biggest things to do against Nazoth decks. I know you don't play against them much anymore. They're not very popular on ladder anymore. But if you can steal or you know somehow like entomb or something, one of the effects, uh, I mean, one of their big death rattles... Not only are you killing the minion the first time, you're killing it a second time, effectively, because yeah. now their main plan of Nazothing and getting all their stuff uh, back is no longer a thing. Well, this is really interesting. Um, VX14 can actually steal the Tyrion right here, I believe. Unless I'm just reading this wrong. 
I'm not entirely sure how the interaction with Keeper of Uldamon, like if you have tied power, I don't know which one actually gets gets killed. Oh, uh, with uh, Enter the Coliseum? Yeah. So I'm what I was thinking was he could keep Revolt on his Sylvanas and then use Enter the Coliseum, but I don't know which one lives after that. Yeah, I, that's actually an interaction I've never seen within the game, and I don't think it's come up too often, so I'm not sure as well. Hmm. Uh, he, actually, he also drew an Acidic Swamp Booze this turn as well. So this is another answer. He doesn't have to steal the Tyrion now, though I know he wants to because of, like you said, that is off thing, but he has an answer to Ashbringer now that doesn't involve him burning cards and getting into fatigue sooner. Yeah, I mean, he can He can also just 50-50 it. He can use Crazed Alchemist on the Tyrion, make it a 3-6. Keeper of Voldemort, his Sylvanas, go for the 50-50, which it looks like he's going for. Yeah, he's running low on time here. Wow, oh, there's steals a fist the Tyrion. Yeah. Unbelievable. I'll tell you what, I mean, Fatal Ossity was back was against the wall, and he was at the mercy of VX-14 in that one. This is a tough road from here. You know, I miss the double Ragnaros decks. <laughs> Ragnaros making his Light Lord. You like the Light Lord? I'm a, I'm a big fan of the Fire Lord. You're such a hipster Ragnaros fan. I, it's just so cool. It's such a good design. Oh, for sure. I I really like it actually, but definitely like Fire Lord better. And this is the first appearance of it tonight. And if it if we get any kind of action from Ragnaros tonight, like we did yesterday, I'm all for playing it as soon as possible in all the games. We had some very awesome Ragnaros plays yesterday. <laughs> Just rip it and then hit the face. <laughs> yeah. The one in six. Yeah, Chalky definitely lost a game yesterday if you, if you didn't watch our uh, broadcast, guys. And shame on you if you didn't. But Chalky lost a game where he got a, a one in six Ragnaros to the face. I don't know. I don't know how Fatalosity wins this one. No this is so brutal. I mean, if he goes for the reverse steal here, it's just not happening. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, I'd like to see VX14 probably kill off this Tyrion ASAP and then make a decision. Hmm. All right. So if you kill off this Tyrion, and then you can do some creative trading. You can actually make it to where you catch up your minion in the consecration, but is that like, I think it might just be too aggressive, right? When do you Not need your, yeah, I was trying to say like, what are you saving your consecration for and how much damage are you pushing? That's the important part is you need to be, if you're going to make aggressive plays at this point, when fatal velocity is at 25, you need to make sure that you have enough to push over the next four or five turns. Cause that's how long it's going to take to kill him. Yeah. I would venture to say that the grind is still in the mind for VX 14. Hmm. So there's the Tyrion death. There's the hero power. I'm going to trade off this crazed. I think I'd like to see that Keeper of Voldemort attack first. Yeah, I definitely would as well. I mean, because it's the worst case scenario, you might as well just get the attack out of the way. Wow. Yeah, I, I kind of like... Oh, wow. I, I didn't expect that. I, I was kind of expecting, like, trade, trade... And then five to the face. Yeah. But. Well, I, I think that, that again, the, the mindset for VX is just grind out the resources. He yeah, believes he's going to win this game. He just took away Tyrion. He took he away Ashbringer. He took away the a, second copy of Tyrion. Yeah, from the Nazoth possibility. You know, as long as he just keeps his resources well used in this one, mm -hmm. it kind of makes sense. I, I think I personally would have favored just holding on to the Ashbringer at that point. Uh, I think I get at least one attack in with it just because of weapon removal. But I mean, I think maybe holding on to it's actually a good argument that you just want him to draw three cards, right? Like he has Harrison here. His hand is so full, he's just burning a bunch of cards. Yeah, I mean, you, you've already Harrison's an unplayable card at the moment simply because mm -hmm. of the hand size, and then also considering the fatigue war. Fatal Ossie doesn't have that big push at the end of the game with Tyrion. How does he climb yeah. out of this? You know, the, the more I think about it, the more I kind of like it because. In situations like this, in games like this where it's control and control, my usual play lines are I just try to present threat boards like this to my opponent that, you know, when you look at them in a, in a vacuum that doesn't look super threatening, but they have to do something about it or eventually they're going to lose to it. And they have to start using their removal very inefficiently. And then I can play my bigger and better threats later in the game once I start to wear them down. And BX draws the Reno. I don't think it's too much of a surprise at this point. Dude, he can heal for one this turn, Nathan. 
Guessing that card's aimed at fatigue right now. We'll draw an extra. Spellbreaker, probably gonna stick in the hand. I, I imagine this Spellbreaker is gonna be trying to aim to that second Sylvanas that could yeah. make an appearance. Consecration's looking pretty good now. So we'll Save forego the hero power. And the resource battle is now in favor of VX. I'd love to get a look at the deck sizes. See how many cards are left for each player. I think that's going to dictate a large portion of this game as well. Yeah, I know Fatal Lossy's drawn one extra card that I can remember, as well as VX14 has drawn at least one. As well, there's been uh, a Harrison Jones for one card, and there's been a Loot Hoarder for one card. And Fatal Lossy side. has there been anything else? I'm trying to think. By the way, Ragnaros. Yeah, I kind of like ripping Rag here. Let's go. Well, the big game hunter sitting in VX's hand. Well, you know, this is this is a bad feeling. I've had my Ragnaros's big game hunter quite a bit, but not so much at five mana. Yeah, it's been very rare since then. Yeah, it's been a while, Nathan. Yeah. Not a surprise to see VX continue to cut into resources. He wants to make sure he's eliminating every possibility from Fatal Ossie's side. Now, whether that's better than pushing damage, that story's yet to be told. But, uh, you know, we for years we saw Kalento just constantly grind people's resources into dust and win tournament after tournament. And you know what? I really like it in this matchup just because of Justicar. I mean, if he keeps... Justicar's giving him big leverage. I mean, yeah, if he just keeps having to trade cards for these boards, I mean, he's steadily getting ahead on resources, steadily getting ahead on cards in his hand, and he's going to get more minions in play. Yep. So deck right. sizes look like they're even at this point. I, I mean, I don't know what Fatalocity does. His hand is just... its For this situation, it's bad. Yeah, I mean, like, this Wild Pyromancer is not actually going to get enough done. Kodo is super low impactful. I mean, you could sacrifice your Ragnaros. You could just play Ragnaros, gain 8 life, and hope that uh, VX14 has to trade into it, but that's not very good either. I, I would venture to say that Baron Geddon is Ooh. a possibility this turn. Yeah, I, I don't mind Baron on this board at all. It does deny his hero power. So that's something interesting to note. That's true, actually. Hmm. You just saw Aldor Kodo. You know that Tyrion's gone. You know Sylvanas is gone. Options, options. I think I'm liking Baron here. Yeah, and I, I venture to say that from VX14 side, that it's going to be really hard for him to ever get in a situation where he has to wild pyromancer equality. That is reserved for the Nazoth turn. Oh, yeah. So is Edric. I mean, Edric's kind of in the same mm -hmm. vein. I mean, that was one of the initial counters that we added into the build was you played a copy of Edric and in the Nazoth Paladin Mirror when they Nazoth, you Edric. You're like, yeah, go ahead, attack me for five. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> go ahead and attack me for five. That's really cute. You know, I always love seeing Baron Geddon in decks other than Warrior because every time I do, I'm like, oh yeah, that's a neutral card. Because for the longest time, I think like the first year I played Hearthstone, I never saw this card in deck other than Control Warrior. Yeah, Strife Crow actually used it really early on in Druid as well to a lot of success, which was really cool to see back then. You know, that yeah, I've heard, I've heard of this, but he was really setting the tone back in the early days. Mm -hmm. That guy was a monster when the game was first underway. He just kept he at every single step of the way. It felt like that he was the one setting the trend. He was just like one step ahead of everyone else. Yeah. Like even on the way he played for tempo, he was he was ahead of the game at the at the time. Yeah, I mean, I recently went back and watched some some old footage of like original Hearthstone uh, tournaments. It was very interesting to watch because you see people trading in situations where you're just like, "No, why are you trading?" Played bad back yeah. then. Yeah, I mean, we played really bad. <laughs> I think it was like, I, I watched just for pure entertainment purposes. It was actually fun to just see these plays and hear the announcers talk about them. I'm like, oh man. Yeah, back in the day, we were still figuring out that you couldn't execute your own Sylvanas. Oh yeah. Artosis. Yeah. Hey, I made that mistake too. You would make that mistake. Yeah, but I think, I think WX is just trapped the heat at this point. I mean, Tyrion is good to go. 
In my own defense, it was like the first or second show I ever did. I was excited. Execute your own. He, he tried that twice. You know that? Oh, I didn't know it was twice. It's the, it wasn't I even like he did it time. once. It's like he did it twice. <laughs> Nobody oh, knows yeah. about that second time. It's like, uh, what's his name of Germach? Um, Forsen of Germach. There's like videos of him just over and over again messing up, you know, having four minions in play. I mean, how hard is it to count to four? <laughs> Seems pretty easy to me. BX not going to play Tyrion. Now that I don't understand. I, this is, I, let's giddy up. Tyrion is busted here. Let's giddy up. I mean, maybe he just thinks that he's going to, like, just solo him with Baron get in here. There's another uncastable card. Tyrion. Yeah. It's still Tyrion. <laughs> yeah. Tyrion. I, I like forgoing the hero power, by the way, of Baron getting out. There's no reason to, you know, hero power and the minions are gonna are just going to die. Those silver recruit, like, they could have a family at home. You know, you don't know. Incorrect. Frost Giant. You, oh, you just bluff Frost Giant? Okay. Frost Giant. Incorrect. I'm doing it every Tim time. Marino, I like it. This is a play that I've kind of like championed making more and more out of Reno decks. And I've talked about it a lot on like my own personal stream and in matches too. I'm just like, I don't understand why people don't just play Reno sometimes. They're like, oh, I want to make sure I get full value from it. I'm like, you know what full value from Reno is? Gaining 12 life and putting a 4-6 in a play. That sounds like a lot of value to me. Beating him up. Yeah, just hit with, him in the face. The you're like, they're so cold to a 4-6 here. Just play it. Hmm. I say that as he draws True Silver Champion that can answer a 4-4, you know. Well, I, I'm VX should have played this Tyrion. <laughs> he, mm -hmm. should, he would have just mauled Fatal Ossie with the Tyrion. You know, you're probably playing Zoth, you, got, you have Spellbreaker for the Sylvanas. Like, you have everything mm -hmm. to check it. I, I literally don't even know how Fatal Ossie would handle the Tyrion. Like, I can't even think of, like, Paladin cards that would handle that very well right now. Yeah, it's going to take more than one, for sure. And it's going to be some creative stuff, and then you're yielding full initiative back over to VX. And I think once you, you know, he were to make a play like that, and he sees Fatalocity go through hoops to remove everything, I think that's when you start moving in as quickly as possible. Wow. Consecrate. And true silver champion for a Baron Geddon that's already dealt about 30 damage. Yeah, that Baron got in a ton. Oh, he was waiting for the rallying blade buff. Figured it out. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, that Honest takes two turns, though. <laughs> Honest Honestly, with the Tyrion, I even like not using hero power here to avoid mind control tech shenanigans. Yeah, you have it in your own deck, so you might as well play around it. Not, e not even that. It's just like, how could you lose this game? That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, of course. I, I don't see a way he loses. Just run over the 1-1, one, one, play Tyrion, go. That's a, that's actually a pretty good mind frame to get into when you feel like you're super far ahead in the game. Uh, because I feel that some people can get relatively sloppy when they're super far ahead in the game. I, I know that I'm uh, guilty of this sometimes. That I start you know, clicking cards. I'm like, oh, I can never lose here. But you should you know, be thinking about playing as, as well as you possibly can on the spot. And then how can I lose from here? Well, I'm... Almost certain that at this point, Fatalocity is not liking the Nazoth. I mean, being at 14 means that he just dies to any real push from his opponent. Like if he chose Nazoth right here, VX just silences the taunt that's been played, jams down the Rallying Blade, lethal. I'm trying to find a good play line for Fatalocity this turn. It hasn't been there for like 15 turns now. I mean, every single one of his turns has looked miserable. And it's because VX's build is just so greedy at the top end. I mean, he got the Sylvanas steal on the 50-50. And that was like the that was like the big turning point in the game. If that Sylvanas stole the 1-1 one -one instead, Fatalocity had a chance. Yeah, so it's kind of... stage. Whew. It's actually kind of funny that Nizoth Paladin... Some of your worst matchups involve Reno decks. Just decks that just have these huge, greedy spells, these huge, greedy minions that have such big effects. And it's like, man, you, you just you can't get through all of this sometimes. Well, lethal is available. I have a Finley in here. Yeah. So weird. So the old 
enhance my hero power, replace my hero power. Yeah, maybe looking for maybe looking for like an armor up or a heal there, and then just a cart later, just depending on the matchup. Either way, VX takes an incredibly decisive game number one. You know, started on the back of the steel against the Tyrion. I'm curious if there was a way he could have ensured at that turn. Um, was lacking like an Aldor Peacekeeper or something. If he had Aldor Peacekeeper, would have been beautiful. Could have Aldor his own Sylvanas and then just played under the Coliseum. Would have 3-3 three, three versus Tyrion, still a Tyrion. Would have been beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, but Keeper Voldemort was the only option at that point. Uh, so either way, I mean, Fatal Ossie just did not have the game plan in that one to take it down. I mean, I think he anticipated the game going a lot longer than it did. And obviously the Sylvanas still very unfortunate. But, you know, I look at that game and wonder if Fatal Ossie played it a little bit quicker if he had a better chance. And it's hard to really pinpoint that on game one when you don't know your opponent's list because you're put into this uncomfortable spot where you have to make the decision very early. Mm -hmm. And in this situation, just happened to be the wrong one. Yeah, I can agree with you there. It's really hard to make that kind of call that, especially when you just have, you know, one gear for your deck. You're playing this off Paladin. You play slow. And yeah. this is kind of an interesting spot to be in, too. Uh, I know it's not a good spot to be in when you're on the opposite side of Priest that has Entomb, especially if they have two Entombs in their deck, when you're Nazoth Paladin. Yeah, I think a lot of this is going to boil down to the rest of BX's deck. I mean, given what we saw in the first one, I think there's a pretty good likelihood that I that I would consider him a favorite in this. Now, that being said, in my experience playing Nazoth Paladin, Nazoth Paladin's favored. And literally, quite literally, all you do is you force Entombs onto everything but Sylvanas. right. And then at some point, your opponent needs to play Tyrion to keep up with the hero power. When Tyrion gets played, you wild power man's her equality with the Sylvanas, take the Tyrion back, and then you Nazoth. And that's that's the real game plan of that deck. The problem with that is if VX is playing it's like Thought Steel, Shifting Shade, maybe his own Nazoth build, that's how it's offset. And that's kind of what Chalky was going for at that Dreamhex state. I mean, we're looking at big flashbacks to the early stages of the metagame with these mm -hmm. last two matchups. Yeah, and you see that VX actually, you know, is thinking ahead in his mulligan as well, keeping in Tomb. Not a big fan of keeping six mana cards in my opening hand too often, but like you said, in Tomb is just so big in this matchup, and we got to see if Fatal Ocity kind of knows that way to, you know, dance around this matchup, like you said, because that's a pretty intricate line that you have to know ahead of time. And, you know, some players, if they haven't had enough reps with the deck, might not have figured that one out just yet. Yeah, I honestly don't really like the North Shire Cleric here on turn one, simply because you've already seen Rallying Blade from your opponent. I, I agree, exactly, because of that card. Like, at this stage, Fatalocity now has the option of how he wants to approach this game. Does he want to try to run VX out of cards? Does he want to just be patient and wait? I mean, what does VX actually do in this spot? The Sure, North Shire Cleric's gotten in three points of damage here, but that early damage is not how you win this game. It's almost... The damage is... Pretty irrelevant, honestly. I mean, at some point in time, uh, Fatal Lossy is going to heal. His deck is full of them. And usually you, you can overheal in, in matchups where someone's not doing a lot of damage to you because of, you know, the forbidden healing card. And two to three to four points of damage might not matter, like you just said. And another thing here is it actually allows him to get a card out of his hand early in the game because he can answer the Northshire Cleric pretty well with, you know, a weapon or a coda or something, you know, just a one for one. And that also presents a threat for VX to deal with that. If you just don't play the Northshire cleric, the card just sits in fatal Ossie's hand. And at some point in time, he has to start playing things. And that plays into your, you know, priest deck a lot better. Move quickly. I mean, the debate here is how long do you leave this Northshire out? You know, do you want it? Do you want your opponent to draw cards at some point? I'm guessing no. Yeah, it looks like he's gonna go ahead and go with no here and just play the Rallying Blade. That is a mind control. I, I don't think Fatal Ossie can win this game. I really don't. We didn't see Justicar in his build last time. Uh, VX has clearly come ready to fight the control battle. I guess Karen is a way. I mean, Karen is one of the cards where if he gets entombed, you're pretty happy about it. Mm -hmm. It's one of the least valuable ones yeah. to get entombed. It's definitely like your least valuable uh, death rattle. That's you know not like a two drop. It's not like loot hoarder. You know, one of your you know big legendary minions that's got death rattle. It's definitely the least of the three or four that you're playing. Yeah, 
I expect quite a few of these turns again this game. Buckle in. You know, I thought we'd seen the last of this admirable. I was kind of enjoying standard, the fact that it sped way up. The matches were fast. They were still intricate, even though they were fast. We're kind of harping back to those days of two, two and a half hour matches. <laughs> I'm having flashbacks and of nightmares of uh, the beginning of standard. I did a, uh, I think I did a day where we did six or seven best of fives in one day, and it took like 13 hours, I think. You and I did? Uh, no, no, I was saying that, that that I did. I think I did it with TJ, but oh, I, I don't remember. But we had we had some real long grindy matches. But thankfully, in the second day, uh, I think it was Firebat and Amnesiac showed up with complete OTK lineups, which is something I had actually talked about when people were playing these kind of lineups, like Nizoth Paladin, like these super control pre stacks of like Nizoth in it. And I was, I was like, man, you just can't kill your opponent. They're always at like 24 or higher. You just need a deck that can do that much damage in one turn. So you saw people come with lineups of literal, just pure OTK decks. I mean, that definitely is a good way to beat the very greedy control decks that don't get to 70 armor. Just kill them one right. turn. Like, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Yeah, you, you can only play it in a format where you get a ban because you have to ban warrior. You can Depends get your entire tilt, yeah. Yeah, you can get your entire lineup beat by just one warrior deck. Thanks, Conquest. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Hey, your warrior got me. Fine. Now your priest and your paladin, on the other hand. Yeah. They got thirty life and thirty life only. <laughs> I'd like to see that change. I think I'd like to see um. It move in the direction of of, uh, of almost every class being able to extend their life somehow. Like, even if it's just temporary. Like, if, like, priests, when they heal themselves at 30, they only gain one? Well, not that. That'd be busted, I think. <laughs> um, let's not get crazy. Priest is really good at doing nothing. Like, when you get to a nothing standstill, Priest is going to win a lot of those. Mm -hmm. Unless it's an OTK build. But, you know, being able to, like, increase your maximum life total like expending real cards i'm okay with that but like if you could just do it naturally with the hero power like over time that would really add up i don't know maybe I mean, i'm not okay with it oh yeah fatalocity knows that he is not going to win this game be the long game mm. he's going to have to find some pieces to put this together and so what i'm thinking his game plan is is force through a lot of threats eventually stick Tyrion. Tyrion gets hit with like a shadow or death is off it. Which you're very happy with in this matchup, by the way. If your Tyrion gets hit by Shadow Word Death, it's like a fist yep. pump for you as, as an yep. Azoth Paladin player. So this Cairn, I imagine, could very easily be the first test. I think you're yeah. thrilled if Cairn gets entombed here. Yeah, if you're if you're tracking, there was one card kept in the opening hand that wasn't mulliganed. It's still all the way to the left. Yeah, there we go. Given the way that VX is played, I, I would say there's almost no chance that he entombs this. Yeah, I definitely agree, actually. I don't think there's a chance. I don't even know if he Sylvanas is on this board either. Might be more important to take care of some of the other things. Now, have we seen a double out of VX's deck yet? Um, That's a good question. I don't think we have. Are we, are we seeing the, the Mono Reno lineup here? Well, Shadow Word Horror is definitely a strange card. Yeah. I actually had this cast on me the first time ever the other day, and it was from a Yogg. You know, I played that right when it first came out, and I just took it out in two games. Yep. <laughs> I was like, yeah, let's try this. No, let's take it out. <laughs> this this <laughs> well, doesn't well, work. Well, we tried, Nathan. We gave it, we gave it you know, yeah. a good old country try. I got a participation award for it. Let me think. Was it a ribbon or one of those little little bitty bitty trophies? It, it was a it was one of the little tiny bitty trophies. Do you it like that more than the it ribbon? It was engraved that said you tried. <laughs> At least you tried. We should give out more of those. You know what? The next time I go to a LAN, Nathan, I'm going to get like 10 of those made and start handing them out to random people like when they lose a big matchup or something just to kind of troll them. You're getting the first one. You're just going to have a beard painted on it. Now, we do see a shifting shade here. If this isn't a wow, single I, deck, if this isn't a Reno deck, yeah, I do as well. 
heal up the opposing Cairn, so that way you can steal it. Yeah. Well, Sylvanas is down now, so Fatalocity can be a little bit happy about that. The problem with it is that the Cairn is on the board right now, and so this is presenting some issues. The other problem is he doesn't have all the threats that he needs in his hand. If he had the Tyrion and the Sylvanas right now, I think he'd have a way to get in this game. You know, if we, if we had Tyrion and, and Ragnaros Lightlord, like, he'd have a way to get in this game, maybe. Yeah, but he's got the other end of his deck, Nathan, so what does he have to do here? I don't know. He's just got a mind control. Like, that is unreal. This deck is just, like, how does this beat Shaman? When was the last time that you were at 25 life on turn 8? You have 10 cards in your hand, your opponent has one min, and you're like, I don't know how I win this game. I have to be like... 50% of the time, man. <laughs> you're over there doing math for your OTK Warrior deck, and you're like, I just don't think I can do it. Yeah, just don't think I can. So first half of Cairn. Does he have time to play that? There we go. That rope is burning down awfully quick. I think I'm going to rename Fatal Rope. You know, we have Rope Coach. We've now got Fatal Rope. Fatal Ropity. Fatal Ropity. Right. Rope Velocity. Right. Rope Velocity, actually. That's actually better. Rope Velocity. All right. Fat Rope City. Fat Rope City. <laughs> Fat Rope City. What is going on in that head of yours sometimes, man? <laughs> Fat Rope City. I don't even know, honestly. That sounds like the name of like the next album I'm dropping. Yeah, exactly. It, it, that would, would that be your, your hip-hop album? Yo, check it out. It's my new album, y'all. Fat Rope City. And I just talk about people playing slow Hearthstone games and how much I don't like it. Drop it August 14th. <laughs> at your local Walmart. <laughs> Walmart. Hey, I definitely thrilled Walmart. To I'd thrill to be getting an album in Walmart. That's a big deal. Yeah, It would be censored, just so you know. I don't care if it's censored. I, look, I would sell out as a musician the very first opportunity I got. Like, if, you're, if your integrity is literally worth millions of dollars to you, God bless. Yeah. Isn't that the point, by the way? I've always had that argument. People are like, you know, I love this band before they sold out. I'm like, that's the point. Like... Like, when you're in your garage and you're 16 and you're playing your guitar, you're like, man, I love music, but I'd really like to be a millionaire. <laughs> I always pictured Nickelback as, like, oh, maybe maybe the guy wasn't terrible. And he's, like, sitting in the room with producers. They're like, look, you got to stop making the music you want to make. You have to do it this way. He's like, man, I'm not going to sell out. That music's terrible you want me to make. They're like, we'll, we'll pay you a millions. And he's like, Phew. Cabal Shadow Priest is pretty good here. Take care of this 1-1. One, one. Yeah. Yeah, let's keep it. It's just snowballing way too hard for VX. Yeah. I mean, Fatal Ossie's hand just continues to build worse. Two Doomsayers, two Forbidden Rituals. Tyrion, Ooh. I mean, that card on the left side, you're just like, nah, I mean, it has to be Entomb. He hasn't forced yeah. Entomb. For sure he's forced out Sylvanas, but mm. you have to force the Entombs. And now the pressure is mounting. Yeah, I mean, these Doomsayers are just terrible at this point as well. It's funny, uh, VX14 actually has some like really cool creative ways to deal with uh, Doomsayers as well. All right, now just the board gets <laughs> Doomsayer too. That's what I'm saying. Like you know, yeah. even if he doesn't have to, he, he doesn't even have to attack them. He can get damage in. You know, because at a lot of spots here, when you play Doomsayer, you're not playing it to kill their minions. You're just playing it to gain seven life. Is there ever a world, I mean, you know the card's been sitting in his hand where you're just like, I can never win this game, Tyrion, go, and pray. <laughs> you're like, please just don't have it. I honestly don't think it's that bad. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, I think it's, this is one of those plays where you sit there and you're like, well, I'm never winning this game anyway. Let's try our 10%er, or 5%er. Put your face oh, there we go. Yeah, well, welcome to mind control. 
that is a nice Tyrion. It would be a shame if something were to happen to it. BX, I don't know what you're thinking about, man. This is like one of the best mind control targets in the game. You got it, bruh. I wonder. You've got 10 mana. Might as well use it. I, I don't even know what could possibly be going through VX's mind right now. I mean, he seems tortured on his side. You know, is he thinking like, am I getting walked into this mind control here? Is there something that would be better for me to mind control? I mean, maybe he's considering mind control tech. Mm -hmm. That's definitely a real possibility. Yeah, I think that's actually the, the one thing he's thinking about for sure. Now that you mentioned that, that's a good point. But, I mean, you've seen almost this entire Paladin deck. I think you got a no text, you can just entomb it. You're like, yeah, yeah. all right. Track number right, two. I'll just, yeah, I'll just take it again. Think. Well, I think we gave it the old... Uh, College try? Yeah, Let but... This one's this one's done, though. This is, I mean, when you have a pallet, when you have a pre stack that has a mind control in it versus his off paladin, you are not going to lose that matchup. Yeah, you gotta you gotta feel for fatalocity here too. I mean, he's just run into the absolute buzzsaw here in the first two games. Just two of two matchups you're you're well, a not expecting, and b just you're just almost not prepared for. I mean, the Justicar in the first game was just too much, and then. You just don't have enough to keep up with this board anymore. They just have so such good answers to every way you win. Well, here is attempt number two. And this will be followed up by many, many good cards for VX. Hey, speaking. Yeah, there's another one. Why, why not? Sylvanas and Tyrion have died. You might want to get in some damage from the Ashbringer first. So I like the Justicar here. VX likes him to Justicar. Hmm. See, what's the rest of his lineup? I'm looking it up right now. So we've seen Paladin in the Priest lineup. room. Yeah, he's got Druid and... Uh, I'd really yeah, his, like to see how this Druid's bad, built. So. I'm, I'm going to be <clears> really <throat> curious how this Druid's built. It's just aggro beast Druid. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I needed that like, change of pace. He's like, already got the Enchanted Raven. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> from, from, from the wing. Yeah, he somehow got the wing early. Uh, he's like, I got an early invite to the party, guys. For duty. I've been I've hanging out with Medivh my... all week. Yeah, I've already had my fun night. First desperation heal is in. So VX, this point, kind of free to do as he pleases. Yeah, I, like, I, like, push yeah I, like, I like Kodo push all the damage here because this is going to force another... You know, wrath effect from Fatalocity, and you saw him go through hoops to do the last one. So once he does this one, you can just niz off uh, next turn with impurity. I think I just get in the five here with Ashbringer too. I don't yeah. see why not. I mean, we Let's have go. we have this, we have a second Tyrion in hand basically. Yeah, just hit him in the face, please. Let's go. Fatalocity bled a card and is in the exact same spot he was last turn. Mm -hmm. It's a really good feeling, Nathan. Well, for VX. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen looks like way over lethal for VX. We will take an incredibly decisive game number two. Does spot it instantly. So two zero lead. Fatalocity back against the wall, and at this point, pinpointing what this druid build is going to look like uh, seems like a very difficult task. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to go out on a limb and say it's Yogg Druid, just because the deck's so good and plays so well against other decks, but I mean, anything's possible with the lineups that we've seen so far here today, and yeah. if you're Fatalocity, do you just play the Paladin deck again? 
Yeah, it's got to um, get a win for you. Yeah, I, I think you definitely do because at this point, concealing the information of your other two decks, I think, is yeah. a real thing. Um, so if you if you happen to lose this game, so be it. Uh, if you happen to win that game, you'll have to reveal. But every single step away, you get a chance. Um, it's very rare that queue up order matters in Conquest. I'd say uh, it's more just sort of like uh, how the matchups end up running into each other, which is completely unpredictable. Um, so not queuing up the Paladin here, I think, would be a bit of a mistake because now everyone knows that he's playing this version of Shaman. And so that could very much affect his next match. And so after our first two matches, Nathan, our first two games that were really surprising and what was going on and what was happening, I'm actually kind of happy that we're having boring decks. You know, to use quotations here, boring. It just <laughs> it looks like Yogg Druid and it just looks like, you know, uh, Shaman just beats you up. I mean, there is an ancestral knowledge on the other side of the board. It's a card that you don't always see in these decks, but not surprised to see it. Yeah, I mean, just having a little bit extra gas in the end game, totally fine. Yeah. The Finley, the Lightning Bolt, Arch and Horse Rider, pretty much spelling out the early here. So, getting underway, VX. It's looking like Yogg. I'm going to say it's Yogg. Yeah. I'll figure out what it is in the meantime. Sir Finley looking for that life tap. But with the way that Fatal Odyssey <clears throat> is shaking his head, I'm going to guess it is not life tap. And nope. Lesser heal, shape shift, or dagger mastery. Honestly, the dagger, I think, is looking pretty decent here. Because Living Roots is kind of one of the cards, I think it's a bit of a nightmare for you. Mm -hmm. So being able to have the extra dagger power could come in use, but the Shapeshift and Lesser Heal do have some real merit as well. I mean, both of those fight against Living Roots strong as well. So all three of these, I think, have some, some reasonable merit here. And we'll go with yeah. the Shapeshift looking for Doomhammer later on and BX. First option of the game. He just drew a Savannah, so this is a card you don't always see in Druid builds. Are we seeing another Nazoth deck here? Maybe another crazy build? Or is it just... I'm going to say it's just one card. He's just trying to fight the long battle with all his decks. You know, he's yeah. got way more mid-range effects and all of his stuff. But kind of excited a little bit in a way because this could mean something crazy like that. And you know what? Healing Touch, not a bad card to get here if you're going to have some misses because Force of Nature, not great. Astro... I mean, come on. That card's not even castable at this point. But Healing Touch could actually be pretty good in this matchup sometimes. I say you slam the Communion. You go Coin, Living Roots, Innervate, Communion. Just, live. Let's go. Live. <laughs> Have you ever really lived, before? Tannen? I mean, I've definitely played Turn 1 Astral Communion before and just easily lost the game. <laughs> it's, it's usually how it goes. Yeah, it's, just, it's like I drew an 8 drop, I drew a 9 drop, I drew a 7 drop, and died. Well, there's the Doomhammer pickup. Oh, there's thank God, Yogg Nathan. Yogg pick up. Thank all praise Yogg, Nathan. VX is eyeing that Azure Drake right now, and with Fatal Ossie locked at one mana next turn, I think it's looking pretty good. Yeah, I, I think I would... I'd be hard-pressed not to play Azure Drake this turn. I mean, it does... You aren't ramping in any way, and your turn three, four, and five look kind of rough here, but there's a lot of cards you can draw that are pretty good, and let's say this Azure Drake lives it's pretty easy to steamroll the game from there. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm what I'm thinking about. You get to replace the Innervate. You get a 4-4 well, on board, and your opponent's locked on mana. So he's going to play it patiently. We've seen VX do that the entire time, so it's not a surprise to see him continue to play slow. I mean, this is what I would have anticipated from him for turn after turn. Honestly, I don't hate it, though, now that I think about it, because you can still Innervate out... Uh, the Azure Drake this turn, and then you could actually coin out Living Roots if you want, or some other plays, like you can coin out Mire Keeper now if you want as well, but it doesn't just get blown out by, or not exactly blown out, but you don't get punished by Lightning Bolt or Rock Biter Weapon, which we see that Fatalocity had both of in his hand, and so maybe this is a more consistent play over the next few turns, and I like this play, actually, of just Innervate Coin Sylvanas, because now he has a turn 4 play, he has a turn 5 play, yeah, I mean, the Mire Keeper, I think, really changed the dynamic of this hand. Mm -hmm. I don't think you would have seen the Sylvanas if Mire Keeper didn't get drawn, or something similar, rather. Exactly. Also, I think, depending on what happens this turn, there's a very good chance this Mire Keeper makes a 2-2. I found that in this matchup, I have made 2-2s of my Mire Keeper way more often than probably any other matchup, just because board tension is so important in this matchup. You need to be able to fight for the board, and you getting to play one of your big cards one turn earlier isn't usually good enough when you get to, like, you know, I get to play a turn six Ancient of War instead of a turn seven. Well, they've already gotten in 10 or 15 damage to their minions and can finish you off a burn at that point. Yeah, you'll see it ramp here for sure. Yeah. 2-2 is serving close to no purpose. Yep. 
on this board state. So, yeah. overloaded two mana, Totem Golem. Hey, Rockbiter, Tunnel Trog, not looking bad. That Tunnel Trog, it appears to be protected. And VX just happens to have a very good play against this. But Fatalocity is going to have some follow-up. And so now the race has really begun. Can Fatalocity put together enough of a push here to put VX on the back foot and actually end the game with the rest of his cards? There's Nathan's favorite turn six draw. The old wild growth on turn six. Yep. Every time. Good play here. For VX14 getting to take care of this Tunnel Trog before it even gets in any extra damage or anything crazy going on. But Fatalocity's got some gas in the tank now here too. He just picked up his second Rockbiter weapon to pair with this Doomhammer. I think it might be time to start going face. I'm going Doomhammer every single time. When I'm presented with the option of playing Doomhammer or not playing Doomhammer, I'm usually on the play Doomhammer side. I like just what? getting into 10 here as well, too. Um, you, you know, You're rolling into turn 7. Yeah, eight, you're putting him at 9. <laughs> yeah. You're rolling into turn 7 and 8. There's a lot of uh, big toughness, you know, taunt minions going on. You still have a, a hero power that works well with your Doomhammer as well. So you want to get in the, the, the 10 while you can. So I think it's pretty likely to see Healing Touch this turn. Mm -hmm. Looking at Wrath, Trade, Healing Touch, and then consider either... The wild growth of the hero power. I actually don't mind the wild growth because that accelerates you into Wisp of the Old Gods, Power of the Wild, and then into uh, Yogg. It accelerates um, you into Yogg, Nathan. That's the important part. <laughs> I'm, I, I see. I get. I foresee this game getting to the point where there's going to have to be a, a desperation Yogg. I think. Hmm. Is he cycling this wrath? No, not a chance. Okay, I was about to say I didn't, I didn't think you possibly could here. Now, you definitely can, I definitely like gain eight armor up here, so just gain nine, go back up to 18 here. Wild Grub. Oh, no, man. yeah, Wild Grub's just too good. Wild Grub's just too good, you're right. Yeah, it's, it's busted here. Rolling into the Wisp of the Old Gods, Power of the Wild. In the Yogg! For some reason, I thought he just had nine mana next turn. I had already I had already given him the Wild Growth in my mind. Well, that's a pretty solid draw. Mm-hmm. Put the most power on board. And is he going face? Yeah, I think so. Both? I think he's going to leave his Azure Drake in play here. Whoa. Oh. I kind of like this, actually. Yeah, the swipe doesn't get you very good here. That is really scary for VX14. I think he was planning on his Azure Drake tanking two damage that turn for him. Like him just gaining two life from his Azure Drake there. And that's got to really concern you that your opponent just goes face there. Why would he do it that way instead of with the old God's power log first? You could have kept your Azure Drake around. 5 1 greater than 2 2. Yeah, I think he just realized that as well. 5 2, rather, greater than 2 2. Mm -hmm. And we'll hero power at this point. Metal Destruction. Velocity loves this card. Yeah. I, I, if I remember right, he had it in his decks last time that we did a cast on him as well. He's got his one yeah. damage off lethal. Yeah. Ethan, we're going to get to see Yogg. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it's happening. Chances that the X-14 kills himself, pretty high. Chances that he survives the next turn after Yogg, pretty low. But it's better than just being dead. Yep, he's going to even go for the elemental destruction here. Does not want double savage or shenanigans happening. Here we go. It's Yogg or bust. Yogg and Prey. All right, well, something happened to his hero portrait. He has an attack lined up. Holy oh, we got an ice block. Well, he's probably still going to need to heal. I mean, the damage is very far off at this point. Four to okay, face. Okay. the damage. Mix in. All right. Not, it's not the right one. Hey, Ooh, extra life. Heal. Okay. A charge? Oh, is there like a charge here? If there's a charge yeah, here. Okay, no. I was about to say, I'm going to lose it if there's a charge. Yeah, if he just gets to gets to attack here. This is a pretty sweet juggle here, by the way, if he can pull this off. 
Now, when you attack and it doesn't trigger one of the uh, the secrets here, are you scared about giving him a second Yogg here so you don't want to kill it? Um, no, I'm not scared about that. The only thing I'm thinking, I mean, the only thing I'm thinking about is, is this ice block or not? Oh, this gives him a whole full another turn, too. I he picked up Savage that, War. Yeah, well, hold on. He picked up Savage War. He can make three minions here. He plays Emperor... Meyer Keeper into a 2-2. A two -two. That's 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 power on board. Along oh with gosh, Savage War right. Power of the Wild. He could win next turn. What to do? Well, it's... I mean, this is as close as you're going to get, Yogg. Yeah, you just do this. Savior here. I, I wonder if Fatal Ossie should have popped instead of... Killing... Oh, he didn't have the mana to do it. Yeah. Because he was overloaded for 5 from the Elemental Destruction. Oh. Jeez, that's an unlucky juggle. I'm trying to find a better line than Emperor Meyer Keeper make a 2 2. There's and I can't. One. Yeah, I, and I just can't. Yeah. You have the option of presenting lethal. Let's go. Well, Fatal Ossity is almost sure to choke this out. Zero power face. Step one. There's, there's a few cards that still find lethal even if he removes this 2 2 here. But if he removes the 3 3. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Yeah, he's got 17 even without the 2 2 here, so Drill the Claw is lethal. I don't think I'm removing the 3 3. I think it's poor. Yeah. And then you lose the charge damage from hand. Then a hero power can keep your opponent alive at, at 1 if you don't have the extra damage from hand. Here we go. Wrath well, to cycle. And this is, this is it. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 damage for. VX's turn, looking for four. I'm sorry, five more. Yeah, swipe so. doesn't get it done. This is so close. That's not good enough. Could he so actually drink into anything that heals? Yeah, does he have a um, the feral gain rage? eight armor card here? Feral rage, yeah. Does he have a feral rage in his deck? I think that's it. I think it's the only card you could draw. And then you got to trade in both your guys to do that. Hmm. He might not conclude that line. Honestly, he may just go for the hope it doesn't have damage in hand play. Mm -hmm. Use your hero power, soul the forest, trade in. Mm -hmm. I hate being in these spots personally where you find the, the really intricate lines to keep yourself alive by one and you're like, I can present lethal the next turn and they just have it in their hand. He lost, he throws up the prayer hands. He's got this one. Giddy up! Yeah. Put himself on the not, board. Not getting swept. Yep. So, 2 1. Still in favor of VX. It's an ambush! That would have actually been pretty big here, too. If he would have hit the ambush last turn, he would have oh had my lethal. Gosh, I didn't think about that. Yeah. It's actually pretty savage. Yeah. Well, I, I was, I was. It's pretty savage. I see what you did there with savage roar. But I was actually thinking about that when he when he ambushed uh, when, during the aug turn. I was like, this could actually come up if he actually gets to play another turn. There's sneaky lethals with like ambush and savage roar and all these shenanigans that could happen in Jura decks. I mean, Yogg is just so interesting in Jura decks because they could do so many crazy things. Like other decks are just so linear after they Yogg and. See, this is why I love it, Nathan. Like, that game was great. He went from just being dead to, like, actually having a very good chance of winning. Yeah, in comparison to what it normally would have been, for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Fatalocity gets his point on the board. We're rolling into game number two. The old Nazoth Paladin versus Druid. Do you keep Soul of the Forest in your hand? No. This matchup you're looking for, ways to accelerate and ways to draw. <laughs> it's, like, not even a consideration. Now, he knows what the matchup is, so he knows mm -hmm. that it's going gonna, it's gonna to generally be fairly slow the whole time. Yeah, and it seems to me like that card can be pretty impactful in this matchup in certain areas, but yeah, probably keeping your opening hands a little too aggressive. Yeah, I'd say Nourish tends to be a lot better than. Uh, I can see that. Yeah, I can see that. The for other sure. way around. Still looking for wild growth, obviously. Just stuff, again, stuff to accelerate, stuff to draw. That's how VX is going to win this game. Job's done. Well, he's got a, 
a way to draw and a way to accelerate his opening hand here. Plus, he has a Sylvanas in this build, which could be, you know, pretty big in this matchup if he gets to steal the right minion. We've already seen that so far in this match. Oh my gosh, Fatalocity took a turn! In under 70 seconds! No rope. No, mo no longer is he fat rope city. Players have sped up at this point. I think that last game kind of got him out of that, you know, that, that funk they were in where they were just super tanking every turn trying to figure out the right line they're like oh yeah we have we have decks that do stuff yeah well i'd be right back into it <laughs> we spoke too soon let me think all right so is there ever a reason not to play one of the loot hoarders here if there's a man who i believe can find a reason that man right now is Fatalocity. You know, is making a 1-1 better? Hmm. I look at this hand and I think I, I need to find some, some stuff to work with. Yeah, you want something to pair with this Kodo in case like an early Emperor Thorson happens or you want to be able to take care of, you know, just any minion that a big, big enough minion comes out of the Druid deck. Uh, you know, your hand is a little lackluster here, so you definitely want to find some of your, your other threats in this, or like your humility effects in this deck for, for, uh, for sure. Ooh, that was pretty bad back-to-back -back draws for Fatalocity here. But he still has another loot hoarder in his hand, so not all is lost here this turn. Yeah, I'm definitely playing a second one. Hmm. I mean, once you see the two Forbidden Healings, you gotta know that something's gotta give. I mean, those are, again, two fairly poor draws. And so there's an Innervate for VX. So, yeah, there's some interesting things that can happen here <clears throat> with Innervate. If you're gonna play a card like Wiss of the Old God in this matchup, you probably have to play it the same turn that you play Soul of the Forest. Oh, yeah. I and mean, even then, you could still get cleared pretty easily. Yeah. Well, if that many resources are used, I think you're okay with it, but that's that's generally where the game plan's going. Make it very difficult for your opponent to clear what's going on. You know, if you just if you just send out the first wave, it's going to die. It's going to die almost every time. If you send out two waves in the same turn, suddenly your opponent has to have Wild Pyromancer stuff Pyromancer, and Consecrator, two yeah, Consecrates. Plus, I mean, yeah, plus something, plus Consecration. Yeah, there's And then you're, you have the Consecrations out of the way, so if you have something like the second Wisps of the Old Gods, then that one might stick as well. Yeah, plus you get off and getting initiative back when that happens, too. Yeah. When it uses the whole turn clearing and not really much to give up for that. True Silver Champion, welcome draw. Thanks to uh, thanks to Loot Hoarder. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Loot Hoarder. Thanks, little buddy. He's greedy, but it's okay. Comes back with a True Silver Champion. He's like, look what I found. <laughs> there you go. Thanks, sweet. <laughs> yeah, I rolled high. <laughs> Loot Hoarder would definitely have a high-pitched voice, like, at all times. Oh, yeah, he's a little gnome dude. Yeah. I mean, look at that guy. That's, like, the way I run home with Chipotle. Guac or no guac? What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a question? <laughs> the funny thing is I've, I've actually seen you order Chipotle probably dozens of times. Oh, it's so great. It's like... Yeah. It's chicken, vegetables, guac. It's everything I want. <laughs> yep, Azure Drake for sure in the play here. Nourish is a welcome pickup at this point, too. Again, VX's plan is really to just draw, 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 and find tough turns for Fatalocity. There's also another thing you're, you need, we need to think about here, too, with the Druid deck when you see stuff like Nourish. If he ever finds a Fendral, he can start having huge turns against the Paladin because he's never going to be under pressure against the Paladin deck. So he's just got all the time in the world to kind of just go through his deck and find these cards. And he can wait till he just gets max value off of a card like that. So if you see a turn where he like doesn't Nourish or doesn't Raven Idol, like where he possibly should be doing it, that could be something that's in the back of his mind is he might just wait for a gigantic... Fendral turn that just puts him over the top. That's an interesting one. Yeah, Innervate's pretty welcome here because of, like we said, the Wits of the Old God into Soul of the Forest turn. 
getting a second Raven Idol is not terrible as well, especially if you have a Yogg in your deck. All the more spells are welcome. Yeah, I'm curious if there's something specific he's looking for, which clearly there is. I, I mean, honestly, Second Soul of the Forest might even be on the X's mind at this point. Second Soul of the Forest, Second Nourish, uh, anything that's very impactful. You don't want these like super narrow cards unless it's exactly what you're looking for in a spot here. You want the really powerful, impactful cards. Swanus is awfully awkward here, too. Hmm. The order of the death rattles really matters in this spot. Karen has played first, so his death rattle will activate, and then Sylvanas has played second, so her so her death rattle will activate afterwards. So there were at, if all these minions were to die at the same time, VX will have a target to steal. I, I hate Sylvanas. If I tell you that, I just hate playing against this card. It's it's certainly an awkward one. It makes me have to think more, Nathan. And we know that Tannen's not very good at that. <laughs> I only have so much <laughs> mental energy allocated per game, and it just adds to that total. It's just it's it's the tiniest bit too much. Oh, build board tension. Oh mama. That was a good one. Yeah. Alright, so. If we were to do a crazy Fendral turn this turn, we have 10 mana, right? So depending on how you order it, you get two extra mana as well off of Nourish. So Nourish technically costs one. I think I'm stealing the full Karen here. Yeah. I'm, I'm attacking either Loot Hoarder or the 1-1 one, one here. I'm hero-powering the other one and Wrathing. Now whether I combine yeah. Wrath with Fendral is another story. And how you combine it, again, another story. I mean, he could. I think he's got multiple ways to do it, but I'm. I think I'm taking that Karen. I 100% agree with you. Yeah. Looks like he does as well, and it looks like he is going to actually uh, use the Fendral here this turn. Um, I don't know, I think I might have like thought about possibly not using it this turn, because I feel like you can get maybe more value off of it later. You're kind of putting it out there to die. It's like you just you just have to know this isn't going to live for the turn. Well, I mean, you stole a, you stole a Cairn. And yeah, you I mean, three, now you have two th real threats on board. And you That's have a true. big reload with the with the Wisp of the Old Gods into Innervate Soul of the Forest. I mean, if he forced an equality here, or even like a Consecration, VX is going to be thrilled with that. And so this turn is meant to make it as awkward as possible. That's what the Druid, I think, is looking for. You can definitely mm -hmm. get a lot more value in certain spots if you waited. But the value that you're looking for is just forcing stuff from your opponent and then making it incredibly weird. Yeah, I mean, like, I don't disagree. I'm just saying I think I would have liked to have seen it where a turn where you could also Raven Idol again, but I don't think it's the end of the world. And yeah. here we go. Speaking of the end of the world, this could do it. This is a lot of Death Rattle making minions. The Cairn will make another 2-2 when he dies as well. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's if there's enough space on the board. Yeah, Bale also just shaking his head. This is... This is not good. He actually doesn't have any another spell to activate if he drew Wild Pyromancer here as well. Because if he used yeah. the Forbidden Healing, he's out of mana at that point. If he Consecrates first, all the 2-2s are left on board. I guess he could... Uh, take that back. If he drew Wild Pyromancer, he could play Wild Pyromancer, Consecrate the board. All the 1-1s die. They'd spawn the 2-2 Death Rattles. Wild Pyromancer activates, and then you could Forbidden Healing. Mm-hmm. In Fatal Ocity, like the face he made when he saw this, it was like just kind of an eye roll and a look up to the heavens. He's kind of just like, why me? Like, why is this happening? You know, I brought this lineup. I was ready for all kinds of other things, and then this is what happens. <laughs> that yeah. look says it all. Yeah. What did I do to deserve this? <clears throat> you played Nazoth Paladin. Yeah, good point. Yeah, putting his faith in the light, and it's going to take some mighty faith. Doesn't have a Savage War, though, so I'm guessing that Raven Idol step number one here. Yeah. Yet. Oh, you know what would be great here off Raven Idol? Recycle. Oh, he's got to get a mulch in hand. Mm -hmm. what to do? I think what's great out here is Savage Roar. Yeah, of course. I was thinking of like some of the other corner case ones. Round right, two. Raven Idol, let's go again. Yeah, let's go again. <laughs> Infinite value. Raven Idol again. Yes. <laughs> let's go. Let's go. This is the dream. 
how many times can you miss on Raven Idol? This is ridiculous. Oh. God, maybe you should just nourish first. You know, that was almost as good as the Og turn. <laughs> Time waits for no one. I always feel like Peter Griffin when I play my Yogg. How's that? I'm like, oh, I have this great Yogg turn. Okay, Hex on the Yogg. Hex again. Hex again. Hex again. Hex again. Okay, power overwhelming. Power overwhelming. Power overwhelming. Power overwhelming. Power overwhelming. Power overwhelming. Wind Fury. Charge. Hex. Okay. That's like what I feel like happens to me every time I play that card. I just had to mute my mic. I was laughing so hard. <laughs> <laughs> I just turned a different color, I think, actually, too. <laughs> oh, there may be a tear over here on this well, slide. I can tell you who else might be ready to turn a different color, and it's Fatalocity. Play is Ashbringer into Cairn. Consecrate, Consecrate. Heal for two, I believe. <laughs> Heal for two. Let me think. I guess you could just leave the Cairn alone, too. Yeah, just like heal for max, maybe? Well, the tree does not spawn first, unfortunately. I do like the War Golem in the hand. Big, big, big fan of War Golem. Poor every trees. time I, yeah, every time I see this animation happen, it just kind of, I'm just like, am I getting comboed? You know, you just kind of like, it looks like Force of Nature Savage Roar. Well, I mean, we're still missing two damage here. I think you nourish. Yeah. Try to get this game over with. I mean, there's you don't get many windows presented to you like this by the Paladin deck. There's not many times where you're like, well, I could actually just draw lethal. Is that lethal? Four, five, six, seven, eight. I mean, four, five, six, seven. It looks like VX14 has finished this off. Yep. And then he makes one ones. No, he doesn't. <laughs> oh, He's the most extended the... BM ever. <laughs> He's a like, very decisive game. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, four game set here. Really anti-control lineup. I mean, you no, know, clearly his lineup is targeting control. I'm, I'm curious to see how this Paladin and Priest deck are going to operate versus the more aggressive builds. Uh, but he he just smacked around this Paladin build zero and three for Fatal Austin in his first one. And honestly, not too surprising when you see the way that VX's decks are built. Um, you know, typically it's it's pretty rare that a deck just goes zero and three. But when there's effectively a pure counter lineup, um, which is pretty brutal, honestly, considering that the counter is quite literally to a control build. I, I, yeah, it feels bad, and and just at this point, Fatalocity has got to find a way to just not let that get to him in the next series, and play it normally. You know, a very decisive win again for VX, uh, and would love to see how this build's going to operate against the the rest of the field here. But I mean, he's he was he had Fatalocity's number the entire way in the set. Yeah, I mean, I think your your point about you know you brought this lineup and you just feel shell shocked. You know, with all of a sudden you just got hard countered. I think that's just the biggest thing in this in Fatal Velocity. There's a good chance that you're just really down on yourself after this match, and you just gotta pick yourself up and play as well as you possibly can in the next one. Yeah, definitely. So, so before we go to a break, we want to take this time to thank the sponsors who make this event possible. Geico, the title sponsor of the entire Hearthstone circuit for 2016, sixty thousand dollars in prizes being given away, and I promise you, if you insure anything, and I mean anything at all. Geico can save you some money. Head over to geico.onog.gg and get yourself a free quote there and where you can also sign up to win a CyberPower Gamer Extreme 1000 PC. If you need a new rig, you might have a chance to win one here. you got to sign up on the website. Again, geico.onog.gg. But all you do is sign up for it. You're in the running. Uh, we also want to thank Video Game Voters Network, a grassroots network of gamers encouraging the esports community to get out there and vote in the 2016 election. They host a lot of contests and giveaways and things of that sort. So check out their website at videogamevoters.com and for Razor. So going to a break, and when we come back, our second match will be getting underway. A few more to go here today in day one of feature number five. Don't go anywhere, guys. More Hearthstone right after this.
Welcome back to the One Nation of Gamers circuit feature number five. We just saw VX take down a very decisive match versus Fatalocity, and he's coming back to battle the frog in this best of five set. I'm Nathan, that's Admiral Zamora, joined by the Tannen Grace. Tannen, what did you think of that last set? Um, it was long. It was very surprising, honestly, too. Uh, I was very surprised to see Paladin in both lineups. I didn't think we'd see a single Paladin deck tonight. We saw two. And then, I don't even know if I was more surprised or equally surprised to see Priest. What about you? Um, honestly, kind of the thing that was for me was the fact that the X was willing to play such a greedy lineup, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if he, if he runs into control, they're going to have a tough time beating him. Uh, but how much control have you really seen over the past, I don't know, three, four, five tournaments? You know, it's there occasionally, but it, it feels like it's pretty rare. So taking a big risk pays off in set one. We'll find out if it's going to do the same versus Battlefrog. He's brought Shaman, Warlock, and Warrior and Druid. Druid's been banned away. And on the X's side, Warrior's been banned away. Again, would really like to see his Warrior build. Uh, but I'm sure Battlefrog has plenty of info to fight with at this point. Knows he's facing Yogg. Druid knows he's facing a Reno Paladin deck. Knows he's facing uh, a late game priest with mind control in it. I mean, this is an opportunity, I think, for Battlefrog to get really aggressive and punish uh, potential lack of answers from VX. 100% agree with you. Plus, Battlefrog's got quite an advantage here in the fact that he didn't even have to actually play his first match. Rathbone was a no show. So, not just is he like fresh, but he didn't have to show his decks. Yeah. And, you know, VX14 did. And I'm pretty sure Battlefrog was a pretty interested watcher what was going on in that match. It was yeah. probably as surprised as we were, but I would have already had a game plan made up in this one. And um, it's interesting to see that he did ban the Warrior since he didn't see the deck in the, in the last match, but. I think you can kind of discern what kind of warrior it's going to be, and I would have to believe it's just control warrior. Well, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not banning the Paladin and the Priest. Yeah, <laughs> that's for sure. You know where I'm standing on that one, so I, mm -hmm. I'm right there with Battlefrog. Uh, I'm going to give Battlefrog a slight edge, and, unless he's got a control deck somewhere in this lineup. If he's got a control deck, I think he's got his work cut out for him. But it looks like we're rolling into game number one. Battlefrog and that Doomhammer. I'm going to try to giddy up versus uh. VX, but VX has got a Harrison Jones in hand already. This is a pretty controlling-looking deck from Battlefrog for me here. I mean, this Shaman, it controls your face very well. <laughs> Control that life total. Yeah. Open it up with Argent Squire, Tusker Totemic, and Flaming Faces. Flaming is actually kind of one of the weaker cards in this matchup, I'd say, because of the vulnerability to Alpha Peacekeeper and Humility. But if he's, it is against a Reno build, and so that really will change the way that you can approach this matchup uh, early on, I think. And Mind Control Tech joins the hand. There may be some steel potential here. Yeah, that's but it's a gonna big get, draw. It's about to get really tough for VX and really soon. You know, that's going to be an interesting thing. Like, let's see if Battlefrog sets up situations where he can play around mind control tech. Because if he watched any of the first match, he knows that's in this deck from VX yeah. 14. And so it's going to be interesting to see if, if he can find situations where he can play around it. Yeah, that's a really interesting point to make, too. Uh, and I think that's one of the reasons he's going for... The Feral Spirits now. Not only does he want to set up stronger versus Mind Control tech and Consecration, but mm -hmm. this also restricts his mana for a turn. So that way he can't necessarily just play right into a yep. Mind Control tech. And I like the fact that, you know, I'm, I'm sure there's some people that would consider not using the weapon here, you know, it's like, oh, you have a Mind Control tech in your hand. Like, you need to leave these three minions in place so you can get value off it. That's not necessarily true in this situation because not only are you going to be taking damage, but like you said, Battlefrog is overloaded in that turn. It's very unlikely that he does anything for one mana to play into your into your mind control tech. So I like seeing him actually just go ahead and use the weapons here. <sighs> Double Rockbiter picked up as well. The burst potential is massive right now. And this Flame Refaceless, there's no good answer in VX's 14th hand. Now, yeah. Paladin... Paladin is usually the class that punishes you the most for having the 7-7 seven, seven for 4 and Overload. They have so many good answers, and it, all the humility effects, there are none in BX-14's hand. Yeah, I mean, this could get really tough. Yeah, and this is what you alluded to a little before and why you liked Battlefrog's side of thing. I know you like being aggressive anyway, but when you have these super greedy decks, especially ones that are, you know, Reno-centric, you can put them in really bad spots because their deck just isn't as consistent as some of these other builds. Right, and that's really what that's really where I'm giving Battlefrog the advantage here, too, is simply the consistency of some of these builds just not being on par with, with what we're used to. 
you know, the, a lot of these, a lot of these aggressive builds, they get going very quickly every single time, and you can see VX kind of showing the desperation that he's in right now, where he's loading up the board, trying to proactively answer things. And this is honestly the way you have to play these. You cannot have a perfect answer every single time. You can't try Ooh. to just go for max value. You've got to get the right situations. Speaking of max value, that was a max value Tuskar Totemic there. Totem Golem added to the board here. It just feels like it's always Totem Golem, Nathan. <laughs> it certainly can feel that way sometimes. Either way, though, VX looking in really good shape, uh, to be perfectly honest with you. I mean, the thing he's got to fend off is that Doomhammer Double Rock Brainer Burst. Mm -hmm. Now, he doesn't know that, and that's really where the issue comes in. But outside of that, like I feel like he's in great shape to be able to, to take this game. Yeah, I mean, this Consecration can do a lot of work here on this board. He's got a he uh, <clears throat> Forbidden Feeling in his hand, too, as well, for later. So he's set up in a good spot here to be able to take care of this board. Yeah, and to I, actually I, make sure that his life total has enough buff at the end of the game. Yeah, I totally agree with you. So it'd be interesting to see exactly where this ends up moving from here. But yeah, I mean, yeah, this I, is looking good. I mean, I'm curious if the Wild Pyromancer gets traded off here. You've, you've kind of gotten the value you need out of it. Yeah, there's no difference between one and two toughness against a Shaman deck, but he may just want to have the Wild Pyromancer not be in play anymore because it can actually be a liability that you can't play spells anymore, too. Yeah. He's going to hang on to it. Values the just the option to use it. You know, it's very likely yeah. it's going to get traded off anyway. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, it's very likely it's going to get traded off. Plus, I mean, he has two options for the next turn. And, uh, and minion options, and so it's very unlikely that he's going to need to use Forbidden Healing this turn, so I definitely like this from him. Yeah. So honest, this is a strong. lot of damage, by the way. Wait a minute, 16, 21, 22, he's going to put him at 1? Yeah. Maybe one wow, short here. I don't know if I like that. That's a spot where I think I, I favored loading the board a little bit more. You know, now suddenly you look at this and you wonder what can turn this around. Uh, well, Forbidden Healing can easily turn this around. Just use all of his bursts. I mean, the burst is how you end the game. It's kind of funny. It, he can't really punish with the Forbidden Healing here because it actually kills a couple of his own minions. And then he doesn't get to steal anything with the Sylvanas. But I feel like you almost have to gain 16 here, right? Well, not necessarily. Oh, he is going to, and so we'll trade in the Wild Pyromancer to make sure that that happens. Yeah, he gets a 1-1 one, one here. Two as well. Mm -hmm. Doing it this way. You know, not super impactful, but I think he's okay with that. He's got a little bit of board presence here. He's up to 17. He has a Lay on Hands in his hand here. And a Tyrion. I mean, he's set up to be very defensive here. Yeah, I mean, this is this is the whole reason the burst is important, is to end the game. Not to, not to simply just get control, but the reload is still very strong. Mm-hmm. So we'll see if VX can get through it still. I mean, Tyrion into Lay on Hands and into Zoth, or even just Tyrion into Zoth. Ragnaros Lightlord gets picked up too. Yes. That's a huge draw right now. Yeah, how do you sequence this? Do you just get the 8-8 into play first? Guarantee yourself at a higher life total, but it you know, puts you to 25. You've seen both Rockbinders. It's pretty hard to die from this spot at 25. Yeah, it's really hard to die from this spot at 25. Yeah. You know, we didn't mention Life Tap was picked up by Battle Frog. Just the absolute perfect uh, hero power in this spot. Mm, is this lethal? I uh, hold on. So he plays Flame Tongue. Mm, no, overload. Right. I I, no, I think it might be. If he plays Flame Tongue, he can overload on the Lightning Bolt to face, take him to fourteen. Yeah, I mean he's he's found lethal multiple ways here. Yep, this will do it. Wow, even despite the big reload, everything needed. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. He'll take this game out. What a turn. That's exactly, yeah. Battle I thought he was, I thought he was uh, a couple points short there. Mm. Yeah. Very dominant in game number one. It's just kind of it's kind of the way that those can roll sometimes. You know, just the fact that, that again, his deck is going to be very consistent and it's going to put that pressure on a lot of times. Obviously, the Doomhammer Double Rockbiter was a yeah. critical part of that. But, um, you know, more, more to the note is that... He, you're going to see Battlefrog do that a lot more than you're going to see VX have the right answers. And that's that's kind of the nightmare and why these greedy control decks can be kept at bay is because of the consistency and the power of some of these early game builds. 
And so, again, I love VX's lineup when he's playing against Control, but I don't know if Control is the most popular right now. Yeah, this is like you said. I don't. I can't tell you the last time we saw a Control lineup. You know, yeah. we've seen random decks here or there that are like more on the controlling side of things. But in today's meta, even the decks that are like considered Control decks can still turn the game very quickly on you. Decks like Yogdruid, you know, I wouldn't really classify it as you know like a combo deck or an aggressive deck. I'd say it's like more like a mid range control deck. And it still has a really good matchup against stuff like, you know, these greedy, greedy control decks. Yeah. So, looking like Dragon Warrior for Battle Frog in game number two. And VX going to stick with the Paladin and see if he can make some use out of it. Now, I actually haven't played this matchup ever. I was wondering if you have. Um, no, I have not played the Dragon Warrior versus Reno Paladin matchup. I am pretty much on the side of having never played any of the matchups versus Reno Paladin at this point. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a it's a pretty rare build. Uh, it so plays something... a lot like Nazoth Paladin, so it plays you know similar at least. The end is coming. This goes pretty easy doomsayer, I'd say. So Ravaging Ghoul and Execute, this is a pretty interesting play, honestly. So this is a really aggressive play to the board, and given that Battlefrog's hand is so strong afterwards, I think this is totally okay. I mean, there's not a ton of Execute targets in this matchup, and so the way that he's going to win mostly is just by being incredibly aggressive. And so here's a spot where VX is trying to trap this Ravaging Ghoul into trading. The Battlefrog understands his role in the matchup. It is, it is quite literally to just attack over and over again and put VX in the... Hardest spots possible every step of the way. Yeah, we saw him do it very well in game one, and he's doing it very well here in game two. And the way this is going, this could be a really fast match. I mean, Battlefrog has brought these aggressive decks, like you said, that can give these inconsistent control decks a lot of fits, and you're seeing it happen a ton here. Uh, VX14 not finding value off a lot of his cards here. You know, he's got this acidic swamp ooze in his hand, but there's no weapon in sight in Battlefrog's deck. You gotta love that card against uh, warrior decks, but this is so much damage, but we are going into six mana here. There is an yeah. equality consecration this turn. And there's also a Reno to follow it up. Like, this is brutality from VX. He's drawn all the tools he needs to get this job done. And we have a little bit of a reload over on Battlefrog side. You know, you have double Corcoran Elite and an Azure Drake, but as you said, there's so much just staying power on VX's side. Yep. I mean, that's the big deal here. I mean, the fact that his reload is, is incredibly strong, but Reno's going to reset this game. And how on earth does he get through 30 at this point? I mean, still very strong, but he's going to have to fight through Ragnaros Light Lord. His weapons are already checked. There's a forbidden healing in hand. I think VX has just drawn everything he needs to to win this game. Have you noticed VX's uh, play line in this game? He's multiple times not attacked with his 1-1s one here, just refuses to damage Battlefrog or his minions, just trying to make Battle Rage as bad of a card as possible. Yep. He's not going to do Battlefrog's job for him. Yeah, a little more damage here for Battlefrog. He's going to have to get in the, uh, as much as he can. He wants to make this Draconoid Crusher uh, a possible card here in this game. Yep. Honestly, I think it's the right call at this point, too. I mean, everything is, is kind of going downhill at this point. You're, you're not winning a value game, yeah. Yeah, you're simply relying on the strength of your deck at this point. Um, and so whether or not that can be accomplished is going to be another story, but uh, it's probably his best bet at this point. I mean, there's some really big threats that he can draw as well, too. Like, let's say he draws, like, Ragnaros into Grom over these next couple turns. Yeah. You know, there, there's a chance he finds a way to finish this off. Yeah, or finds Finley in the life tap. I mean, he can still keep the gas going for a bit. Yeah. Malkarok into, you know, the right weapon, you know. There's all kinds of stuff that he could be doing here. Um, now the trade here, there is a chance that Reno Jackson could get healed. Definitely wants his face to get healed, and Reno's going to get the buff here. Maybe a little yeah. bit of life here for Battle Frog. Oh, it makes him Ragnaros too. Yeah, that is definitely the play right now, and it is, there's one place for Battle Frog only. He has to hope that he can push enough damage to end this. We'll pick off the one one. I'm pretty. He wants to increase the chance that he hits that Ragnaros oh. Light Lord. Big game hunter gets picked up for VX. That is might a... have sealed the deal. And I like the attack to face here. 
And honestly, I like the Consecrate to wipe out the 3-2 here as well. Mm -hmm. Yep, gonna make sure that you get your, uh, you get yourself healed here. You get an 8 damage, but you gain 8 life. You're 16 point life swing. I don't know if Battle Frog can come back from this. Yeah, this is gonna be really rough. Execute gets drawn. The use here. Yeah, this, this Light Lord has just done too much this game. Yeah. It's gonna be it's gonna be nigh impossible, I think. Yeah, even a six Swamp Foo's value here. I mean, how does he go out of this? I just don't I I don't see it at this point. I mean the forbidden healing's even back behind. I'm trying to think if you could have like back-to-back -back draws. If you hit Battle Rage here into back-to-back -back good cards, possibly. Now this gets—I was gonna say this doesn't get in seven. No, so seven doesn't get you to make a Draken or Crusher. Plus, there's a Sylvanas in play, making everything really awkward. And now, yeah, you gotta play a six-six here and hope to God this can somehow solo him down from twenty-three. Yeah, well, I can tell you, that's not gonna happen. Is off gonna shut off that possibility. That's just that's just it. Mm -hmm. Everything's Nizoth in the favor for, of BX. Yeah, and Azoth for just Sylvanas, it's just good enough. And uh, this game looked like it might come to a quick con conclusion, but it ended up not. BX14 was able to fight it off, gain just enough life to stay alive, and then that huge Reno on turn seven was too much for Battlefrog to come back from. And you yeah. know what? I don't. Do you, he had to have known there was a Reno in this deck, right? He, you think that he did some scouting and saw it beforehand. I mean, he kind of rolled his eyes when he saw the Reno, but I don't think it was really surprise that was happening no. there because <laughs> that could be, not. yeah, that could be something that happens if he just doesn't know it's a Reno deck. You know, you think it's just straight up in his off Paladin. You know, he doesn't expect him to have a heal for twenty six that turn or you know yeah. whatever it was. You know, the, so the look is the look is disgust. Is, is what it really is. Like, wow, you had yeah. all that and the Reno. Yeah, um, you know, that's the way this game's going to roll. The way that you beat Reno Dex is, quite literally, you ignore the existence of Reno Jackson as a card, mm -hmm. and when they don't have it, you win a lot of games. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, they don't draw it all the time. Paladin, there's not a lot of draw power in that deck. It's not like the Warlock version where you saw something like 16 to 20 cards every turn, and you could get that, like, little more consistency in those Reno decks. It had so many ways to draw and so many ways to clear the board. The Paladin deck is honestly just trying to find good trades and good removal and then heal itself into the further turns of, it, of its game. And you saw him actually execute that plan just just enough in that game to win. Yeah, it's, it's pretty much exactly how the game ends up going. You know, if your opponent has the right cards, you're pretty much done. If your opponent doesn't have the right cards, you're usually in good shape. Uh, and that's, you know, it, it's kind of weird that it boils down to that, but that is that is just the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. So one game apiece for these two. And VX, got to be happy, I think, to get a Paladin win on the board. I feel like without that win, you might be looking at a spot where VX, he's in the same situation that Fatalocity was last match, where the Paladin just, just gets 3 0 <laughs> Yeah, you definitely don't want to be in that kind of spot ever. It's just, it's a bad feeling. You just, you can't find a win with the deck, and that's a forbidden shaping in the Priest deck. We didn't see that the first time around. Yeah, kind of interesting to see, honestly, um, the forbidden shaping here. I'm, I'm curious, like, how, how much power that actually has in this matchup just so you know nathan i'm i'm a little in on the forbidden shaping meta especially in like priests and some other decks you generally want to do it for eight that's like the magic number yeah he might not have the liberty to do it necessarily in this matchup you might have to cast a little bit earlier than they'd want to and Lightwell, well not the greatest but i'm not going to call it terrible right here uh, it's a card that you you have to do something about at some point in time yeah, the problem is that Battlefrog has a very good do something about it yeah. style of turn. Uh, yeah, I think you just go ahead and attack it here because. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, you haven't attacked with Finley yet. Yeah, obviously, you just remove it. I thought for a second it was going to be able to heal itself and then you could take care of it the next turn. And this is what it's like to play a pre stack, Nathan. Yeah, this is. Uh, this is not good. If you're if you're watching Ben Brode, where where's your deck at? Where's this fabled unicorn great priest deck? Where is it at? Because this doesn't look like it. Um, it does not exist, and Ben Brode did not claim Yet. so. Yet. I'm holding him to it, Nathan. He said we don't know if there's a good priest deck yet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's literally he said we don't know. It's like part of the phrase. Community, please. Yeah. 
I'm just going. Yeah, let's say I'm just going along with the community and what everybody else said. I want to believe, Nathan. I want to believe that there's a pre deck that's playable. Well, I think BX wants to believe in this game too, but if he does not draw something incredible, and I'm thinking, you know, uh, like Circle Shadow Healing maybe yeah. right here. Um, Shadow Madness is, is kind of good enough. I mean, it takes a while to kill that Frowling Berserker with Shadow Madness here, but honestly, I don't, I don't know how he's going to quite get out of this one. This one seems this one seems tough to win. Yeah, and Shadow Madness, that's a card I haven't seen in a very long time, but wow. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fan of that card. It always has some really awesome implications whenever you get to play it, though, as we see, not the best in this spot. Yeah, I'm pretty gosh darn excited when my opponent goes, Shadow Man is your 2 2, run it into your Frothing Berserker. And not kill it. Yep. Yeah, this Frothing Berserker is going to get in 8 and. Not going to get in anymore, but that is a lot of damage in a Priest matchup to get in with one minion. Yeah, I'm a little bit curious about the attack here from Battlefrog. I think I would have liked to see him just hold on to the Fiery War Axe. And Alex draws a champion gets drawn, and he's considering this Ravaging Ghoul here, but Life Tap is just... Too just good. Busted. Yeah, it's, you should be using Life Tap almost every turn of the game. I, mean, I don't know how BX is going to stave off this this kind of pressure turn after turn. Yeah, I was just want to say, I would be tapping every turn possible here unless I'm killing BX14. Yeah. It's too good. He can, he can almost never really punish you for tapping, you know, five or six times, maybe seven times in this matchup. I mean, that's Priest in a nutshell. It doesn't. That's part of the reason why so many decks are good against it, is it doesn't have the pressure necessary to keep going. It's it's lacking that at almost every step of the way. When are we going to get aggressive Priest cards? Blizzard, please. Well, they're somewhere out there, but... Oh, maybe not gotta, today. you got to feel pretty good about that, too, if you're Battlefrog holding... Drinking on Crusher and Ragnaros in your hand, and your opponent entombs your Alex draws his champion. Yeah, because uh, suddenly the old 13, and here's a 9 9. Yeah, I think that's one of the main reasons you saw him actually attack with his Battle Axe uh, a few turns ago, is he had this play in mind. He's, he's going to want to make a 9 9 uh, guy here, because you saw VX14 go through hoops to take care of that Frothing Berserker earlier, so there's no Shadow Word uh, death in this, in this hand, unless it was drawn immediately. And this gets in 9 damage this turn. He's going to add a Fairy Dragon here. Let's, let's see, VX14 needs something huge to get out of this. It's, I mean, it's got to be now, too, and that's not it. You have been These games have been fast, Nathan. This is uh, the exact opposite of what we saw in the first match. Yeah, and that's, that's kind of how uh, the control decks will go sometimes. Either it's going to be a long, grueling battle, and you're going to see one player kind of continue to take full control and continue to push, or uh, it's going to take a while. And... and mm -hmm. And um, this is just the way that, that these go. You know, I, I feared for VX's Priest in a, in a matchup like this one. And if that's a Zoo Warlock, um, he does have Shadow. We did see Shadow Word Horror in there, mm -hmm. which will catch some of the cards. But if Battlefrog has one of those hands where it's like an early Councilman and then it gets buffed, suddenly that card doesn't really do anything. And it is a Zoo build. So so there's a Holy I'm Fire in this deck, too, as well. This deck is crazy. Hey, Doomsayer is a good pickup. That is certainly one of the cards that can win you a game. You know, I think it's funny how little Doomsayers we've seen recently after, you know, it felt like there was a month there, maybe like a two to three week span where every deck was playing Doomsayers. People were posting their Hunter list with Doomsayers that were like getting them high on the ladder. And I was like, guys, come on. We can't just jam Doomsayer in every deck. And I was like, wait, yeah, we probably can. Yeah, I mean, it was really good early on. I mean, it, until people found different angles of attack, Doomsayer was kind of the king of the mountain. It was it was really tough to find a way to counter it effectively. Well, I'll say, Nathan, if, if something happens to this Doomsayer, I'm, I'm foreseeing a pretty good Shadow Madness. And there's a pretty good answer to this Doomsayer in his hand. Yeah, Crazed Alchemist is uh, it's one of those cards. And, uh, and this happens. Voidwalker, yeah, <laughs> this Voidwalker is super good. awkward here too. But the Shadow of Horror, pretty good Not on this board. Shabby either. I mean, that's certainly the kind of counterplay you're looking for too for VX. I mean, this is sort of the dream situation, and we'll see if he can actually recover from this and keep the pressure going. But Battle Frog's hand is—it's not bad. Not at all. And you know what? He did see the Shadow Word. Uh, I'm sorry, the uh, Shadow Word Madness in game one. So, I mean, sorry, game two. So, like, 
Maybe he can find a way to play around it here as much as possible in these games, but it looks like he's actually going to play into it this turn. Yeah, I'd say not a ton of options for dealing with it. I mean, they're they're there, but how strong are they? That's really yeah. kind of my question. And so when I see him in that spot, I would tend to say you just you go for it and hope for the best. No, I 100% agree. And Billy makes it into play here. Good old Murloc Raider. Definitely not the Dark Peddler he was looking for, to say the least. Is it the one that he deserves, though? <laughs> the X kind of putting together some uh, the makings of something here, but this is pretty likely to get squashed as well. So I used to be a fan of the Museum Curator, especially in, in decks like this, because it always found Sylvanas or Sneed's old Shredder. But since Wild has happened and Standard has happened, I actually feel like Museum Curator has gotten much worse. Um, I, I would tend to agree with that sentiment as well. Like, I feel like the card was... It's it's at its best in the slower matchups, which is clearly the direction that BX is trying to take this. My question is, is that good enough to really piece together the, the win here? You know, that's, that's again, it's my only concern is he's working with like a ragtag crew of cards here to get this done. Looking for a circle of healing here this this turn. Would have been a really good draw. Um, otherwise, he does have some options to heal himself quite a bit here. Give himself a couple more turns. Abomination. Yeah, I was going to say, that's actually pretty good in this matchup. Yeah, I'm digging it. <laughs> I'm, I mean, it's this... not often you're like, yeah, man, you slam this Abomination. But it's actually pretty good in this matchup. <laughs> Yeah, I mean that. But honestly, that might be the kind of the card that can keep him in this too. But Battlefrog's hand is mounting to this to this Darkshire Councilman, which this was a big problem. I think that mm -hmm. Darkshire Councilman might have been a card that he just doesn't beat. Yeah, that's actually a really good point. Um, he's gonna be able to actually. Well, uh, yeah, you can't spawn a minion here because your board is full. I was about to say for a second here, you could almost get it to four power, which is you know the safest spot to have it. Uh, against Priest, but there's none of those cards in the X's 14 hands that could really punish that anyway, and as good as Abomination is, I don't know if it's going to be good enough on this board. It's probably not good enough here. I mean, the board went way too wide. You know, if Battlefrog had any inkling of holding back, which it's been very clear at this point that he doesn't want to hold anything back, um, yeah. it's it's really tough for, for BX to get back into that. Yeah, and also there's nine charge damage sitting in Battlefrog's hand, so the X-14 needs to keep 10 power off of the board this turn. Can he do that? Darkshire Councilman is threatening so much damage over the next turn. Yep, just going to go with Abomination and heal. Don't really see many better plays here. I mean, it's, this is certainly desperate. And it's yeah. not going to work. There's way too much damage available. Yeah, if you want, you can get in some extra damage here by power overwhelming one of the minions that was going to die anyway and not lose it here, but... Um, does that actually not mean lethal because of that? Yeah, so like if he keeps two damage in play here, would it have been lethal? It would have been 5, 6, 10, 15. 5, 10. 15. If he, I mean, if he'd have kept the MK boss around, yeah. this would have been lethal. Yeah, yeah, he actually misses lethal here this round. I don't know if it's going to matter, but yeah, if you go ahead and just power woman one of your minions before, because uh, it didn't get to attack because of it uh, dying to the Abomination's Death Rattle trigger, I think you actually stay in this game. Yeah, so not lethal this turn, or rather, wasn't lethal last turn, but again, fairly inconsequential. Needs a single point of damage here. But hey, you know, that's, that does not an excuse. You should be playing... Mm -hmm. For your full for your full outs here, and in this situation, he wasn't, and it has potentially cost him some percentage here. Like it would need a miracle for VX to get out of this, but the point is, you don't want to give your opponent the chance for the miracle. Yeah, and uh, yeah, VX fourteen, he found lethal. <laughs> not <laughs> one to miss lethal it. here. Certainly not, and that's going to do it. Battle Frog three one over VX, who drops down to the lower bracket now at this point. And so we'll see if he can climb back from this one. But again, this was the series. I think that it was mm -hmm. it was tough for him to win. Was one just like this one. Um, so you know you, you got to feel for the guy, but at the same time you got to wonder where was this lineup headed? Yeah, you <laughs> to, know, to counter control only. Um, 
Yeah, I, I definitely agree with you. It's one of those things. It's, um, you know, I've said this before. Whenever you're playing in a big tournament, you know, this is this is a big deal. This is a big tournament to VX14 for sure. And whenever you're playing in a big tournament like this, you can play it safe. You can just play good decks. You can't fault anyone for it. And generally, it's the best strategy. Yeah. I'm a big fan of a big tournament just playing the highest variant style I can a lot of times to where when I get it right, I get it right. And we're going to easily win and steamroll people. And when yeah. you get it wrong, yeah, you get to go home early. You get to, you know, you're, you're, you're in and out real quick. Let's go. You know, the, the day's over. He's he's not going home quite yet. Still down the lower bracket. Yeah, but uh, Battle Frog uh, moving his way through this one. So we'll see what he can put together in this one. Uh, got some more Hearthstone coming up, but we're going to have to go to a break. Before we go to the break, we want to uh, take this time to thank everyone who has made this event possible. Uh, Geico for being the title sponsor of the entire circuit. $60,000 in prizes being given away over the course of this open circuit. It's just a massive open. If you insure anything, and I mean anything at all, Geico can save you some money on that. Head over to geico.ong.gg and get yourself a free quote. We're there. You can also enter to win a CyberPower Gamer Extreme 1000 PC. It's free. They're just giving it to you. So you have to sign up over on the website. Also, thanks to Video Game Voters Network, a grassroots network of gamers encouraging the esports community to register to vote in the 2016 election they host a lot of contests and giveaways and things like that uh, so make sure to check them out it's videogamevoters.com and to razor so battle frog takes this one victorious three games to one and when we come back we'll find out if vx can get that redemption that he's looking for don't go anywhere guys more hearthstone after this Welcome back 
to the One Nation of Gamers feature number five. Six thousand dollars in prizes being awarded at this one and a trip to that PAX Prime Finals. The eighth and final one will be given away. I am Nathan. That's Admirable Zamora, joined by the Tan and Grace. And the series so far have been very different. We've seen an incredibly slow one. We've seen a fairly fast one. And now we're back to see if VX can take on Fatalocity again in this series. Fatalocity had his Paladin 3 the last time these two met. Uh, just a match before. We're going to see how the rematch goes. But now it's an elimination match. Whoever loses this one, out of the tournament. Whoever wins this one, moving on. Yeah, and it's a tall task to ask a Fatalocity to win this one, right? I mean, it looked pretty rough for him in the first round with uh, VX14 kind of just having his way with Fatalocity's lineup. You know, uh, Fatalocity brought a kind of controllish lineup, but VX14 went way over the top of him. I mean, yeah. his control decks have Reno, they have Nazoth. They're geared for super, super late games, and it's going to be rough for him to come back through this one, but doesn't mean he's out of it just yet. You know, he can buckle down, find some good play lines, possibly get better hands than he did in his first match, because let's be honest, they were pretty rough too, and find a way to win this one. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of exactly what he's looking for, is just a way to, to get on the board a little bit better. Chooses to leave that pre deck up, and honestly, I think I'd like to see him... I think I'd like to see him change up his gameplay just a little bit. I don't think he's going to be able to beat the pre deck the way that it's built from from uh, VX in this one. And so, were you, about, were you about to say ban priest? I, you, um, you, I think you were about to say it. You just couldn't make yourself say it. No, I was not even considering okay. ban priest. Okay. The, the, okay. You, he's got to be more aggressive against that build. Is all. He's yeah. never going to win a long game. He has to find a way to try to get aggressive. If the game goes long, we've seen what's going to happen. So, mm -hmm. how, however slim the chance may be, try to get aggressive versus it. And hope that's going to go. We're rolling into game number one. There's that Reno in opening hand versus Fatalocity Shaman. VX, last time was in this situation, landed a Reno, but it didn't matter. Yeah, and I got to believe you're keeping this Reno in your opening hand just on power level alone in this matchup. And Fatalocity is going to lead off with his aggressive decks. And this is what we saw VX14 have a problem with in his match that he lost here today uh, against Battlefrog. You know, if, if you put a lot of pressure on him early, these fragile, really slow control decks can have a problem keeping up. Yeah, and I think that's exactly what he's looking to do here. Um, so we'll see how that ends up working out for him. But as we start off here... You know, and I kind of agree with... I don't kind of... I definitely agree with what you were saying earlier. We've seen Fatalocity be very cautious in the couple times that we've seen him. He plays very slow. And I don't necessarily mean his speed of play. He just you know takes his time doesn't overextend, plays kind of cautiously. And I want to see him just throw everything to the wind here. Throw caution to the wind, just play your cards out as fast as you possibly can, try to kill him quickly, and there's a chance that if he does it in this game, he's going to get max punished by Reno Jackson. Yeah, I mean, that's really my major concern is the speed at which Fatalocity is going to play. I think if there's one real thing that he needs to consider here, it's that if he takes it too slow... It's not going to work. VX has navigated the slow games mm. incredibly well. And at this juncture, you're going to have to take more risks than Fatalocity is used to. I mean, it seems to me like he's yeah. not comfortable with taking risks. I 100% uh, agree. It's just going to have to give this, this game. Uh, Eternal Sentinel in his hands, a card we haven't seen in a while. Yeah, Eternal Sentinel is definitely an interesting one to me. Um, it's sometimes there, but sometimes not. And... Mm -hmm. You know, it's tended to be on the not side of things for the most part. So I've actually been playing a shaman deck recently that one of my friends uh, built where it's an aggressive shaman build without flame reef faceless. And I have Eternal Sentinel on the deck. And it's actually been pretty good because, you know, we just got sick and tired of game after game when you play your flame reef faceless that, that your warrior opponent would just be like, Ravaging Ghoul, execute it. And you're like, yeah, now I'm just dead. <laughs> I, can like I can just never recover from the situation ever. And you don't just keep getting your 7-7 seven, seven killed and your mana so taxed the next turn that it's more of a burn-centric deck. Like, you're just trying to get all of your minions into play on turns 1 and 2, and then just get any damage in that you can. And then you have, like, Blood Mage Thalnos. And a bunch of burn spells. And you can kind of play around with Overload a little bit better than the typical Shaman deck. And it's actually been playing pretty well. I mean, there's definitely something there. Yeah, I, I don't mind it so much. You know, I, I expected it to be one of those cards that was played a lot. I think it come, boils down to the amount of room you have in your deck. I think a lot of people did. Yeah, I mean, it was a very good. It was a pretty reasonable card early on. I just think it fell out of favor eventually. 
it was one of those cards that a lot of people saw it and they were like, oh, you know, Shaman's get another great card. And um, obviously the card's very good and very powerful, but it's like you said, you only get 30 cards in your deck. And Shaman, you're competing with a lot of really powerful cards at the, at the in the one and two slots. Yeah, a lot of them. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and take off this. I, I like attacking the one one here as well, but the Teletrog is going to be answered by this true silver champion. Well, okay, so if you don't attack the 1-1, one, one, then Consecration gets you a little bit as well, so. Yeah, well, I like to play that Fatal Ossie's playing this game a lot quicker. I mm -hmm. think it's something he needs to do. Hmm. Mm, I think it's worse still. True Silver yeah, Champion, yeah. I mean, you're going to be in a similar situation next turn with my yes. control deck, except you'll have a True Silver on board. Yeah, I was just about to say, you're going to be in the same situation next turn, just there's not going to be a Tunnel Trog. <laughs> yeah. Plus, I mean, there's some pretty bad gets for you here. If you get, like, the 1-1 one, one or the, the Totem, it's not the best thing in the world for you, even though you yeah. do have Wild Pyromancer to kind of help clean up a lot as well. But, uh, yeah, I think just True Silver Champion is just too good and too consistent here. Plus, it just cuts off so much damage. Like, you you break even on the attack here on the Tunnel Trog, and it cuts off, you know, potentially a lot more damage on the next turn. Well, there's another Tunnel Trog. Yeah, I mean, this it's a really good point you also made there, too. I don't know. I, don't, I can't see feeding the Tunnel Trog to the True Silver at this point. I mean, I'm probably going to be rolling Totems here for quite a while, trying to find something to pick up that really makes a big difference, but it's looking rough. You know, every single time we've seen Velocity play against the X-14 tonight, I feel like that's been the sentiment that you've, you've had to express. It's just looking rough every time, and... I mean, he's at 27 on turn four, and he has a Reno Jackson in his hand. Uh, this is a huge mountain to have to climb up for Fatalocity. Yeah. Well, I mean, he did roll the Taunt Totem, so that's like a very big deal here. I mean, it allows him to get the Tunnel Trog on board. Um, try to force anything you can out of VX's hand. I mean, again, I don't think Fatalocity can really respect any equality clears or things like that. He's just got to go for it every t single time. Hmm. Picks up the Abuses Archer here. Not bad. Adds some power to his board. Yeah, two on not a bad pickup. Just anything to anything to pull power from your opponent's board yep. and actually gain it is is a big swing right now. Now, if if, if you at home are wondering, is there a lightning storm in Fatalocity's uh, deck? There is not. But there's the bigger <laughs> bigger version of the card. There's an elemental destruction. I uh, don't know if that's going to come into play in this matchup. I think it's I think it's one of those cards he's hoping is uh, number thirty in his deck. That definitely could be the case. Would not surprise me at all if he's hoping. Just not, I mean, again, that's like the strategy. You just hope your opponent doesn't have it. Please don't draw elemental destruction. Please don't draw elemental destruction. <laughs> that's just taking him so long every turn. He's actually just thinking that the whole time. He's just willing the elemental destruction to the bottom of his deck. Yeah, but I like the extent here. It's just it's going to get punished. Quality Wild Pyromancer. Almost looks like a waste on this board, but not quite. God, he even adds a Teary into his hand. I don't know if Fatalocity could stack his deck and win this game at this point. Well, there's always those Doomhammer possibilities. Yeah, I mean, I guess like possibly Finley into Life Tap, into Doomhammer, into Rockbiter, Rockbiter. And then we're probably still going to be short because of Reno. Well, there's the Fiddly. Step one. Step one always feels good to complete. <laughs> yeah, you're like, well, look, we're, we're getting started. <laughs> we're on the right foot, at least. Are you ready for an adventure? I'm always ready for adventure. I, I am, too. Oh, step two. Found life tap. It's an uphill climb still, but the possibility's there. I and can we tell you right now, we're never going to see the tempo big game hunter. Mm -hmm. It's not really a play anymore, right? Where you, you just like have the three mana four two. You're like, yeah, just four power is good enough here. It's it's possible here. It's just he knows that it's a check to flame wreath faceless, which is. Mm -hmm. I imagine in, v in VX's mind, one of the only ways that Fatalocity gets some some footing here. 
Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we keep seeing this enter the Coliseum get drawn for VX14, and we have not seen a situation yet where it's going to be good, but yeah. maybe this is the game that he gets to play it. Has not been willing to enter the Coliseum just yet. You're going to be in the mi right mind frame to enter a Coliseum, <laughs> Nathan. You can't just willy nilly walk into a Coliseum. <laughs> you can't just willy nilly. Yeah, you got to be ready. I love that you're just like a you're just like a big grandpa. Oh yeah, I just willy nilly enter in the Coliseum. Well, I mean, I think I'm officially old. Like it, it happened over the last couple of years. Like, I can't pinpoint the exact moment, but I'm officially old, Nathan. Same. I don't hate <laughs> Ragnaros here, by the way. Um, is Tyrion just better though? Because he's yes. spent so many resources. Tyrion yeah. is definitely better. Yeah, I guess you can wait till you're just like even more greedy with Ragnaros and you get the full eight heal out of it. He's just, I mean, just v VX could almost close his eyes and click buttons at this point. As long as Reno is not the one he clicks, he's probably pretty golden. And even sometimes. Even that, yeah, even then. Yeah. <laughs> I would do that just to send a message. Like, it's not always about making the right play, Nathan. Sometimes it's about sending a message. I would just. Get myself to 30, I would greet my opponent and just play Reno. <laughs> Solid play. Yeah, still had all these. Get to 30 and then play Reno. Yeah, you, you have to greet them. You have to greet them. <laughs> I've done a couple of the old at 30 Renos. Yeah. You're like, I didn't yeah. attack before. <laughs> Found the Doomhammer, but... Step three. Don't know if it's getting there. I'm keeping up on that, by the way. On the Doom Hammers. How many steps he needs to take? Well, yeah, we already did step one and two. Step three was find Doom Hammer, and step four is figure it out from there. <laughs> Good old well, step four. That's that's the doozy. Step four is the doozy. <laughs> that's, that's the really hard one. I think it's like step nine is profit, but we got to figure out four to eight. I don't really know this many plans that have, like, that many steps. All of the best plans, Nathan, have that many steps. <laughs> yeah, Siddick Swamp Boo's on the Doomhammer here, and you see Fatal Aussie roll his eyes. It's like, come on, man. I already had no shot. You'd at least give me my 1% chance. <laughs> you just killed my Doomhammer, too. You've already Tyrion and Reno in this game. Let me have my stuff. There's no stuffs to be had in this one. All the stuff is VX's stuff. Yeah, I mean, Fatal Aussie just wants to play. He's like the kid at the playground that just wants to play basketball all day long, and VX14 walks up with... He doesn't have a basketball. VX14 walks up. He's got a basketball. He's like, let's play a game. And they play one, and Fatal Aussie's like, just getting warmed up. He's like, all right, well, thanks for the game, and he's like, brings the ball home <laughs> with him. He's like, man, come on. I just wanted to play. Yeah, all his basketballs have been popped by a bunch of big bullies. Reno Jackson is kind of a bully, if you think about it. Oh, he's a big bully. Yeah, I'm reporting him to Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to report Reno Jackson. Oh boy, we're gonna get to see the enter of the Coliseum. This is this is some bullying right here, actually. This is one of those moments where, like, your opponent plays this card and you're like, really? You're like, Come on, how much worse can this have really gone? And he's at 30. Yeah. And you got to feel for Fatalocity here because this is the class he really needed to find some wins with in this matchup. I really don't like the way the rest of his lineup matches up against VX14 here. And Fatalocity, like we said all night... He's not going to miss lethal. Yep. <laughs> Does find it in this one. VX takes a grindy game number one where he is the massive favorite pretty much the entire time. Um, mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's again, kind of an example of the way that these decks will work. You know, when they when they get going, they get going and they don't stop. Yeah. And uh, it's hard to come back from those kinds of situations. But, you know, sometimes, sometimes that's the way the cookie crumbles. You can't, you can't win every single one, but, you know, you do what you can. And let the cards decide the rest. And, and uh, with that priest there, I think the priest is 
going to lock down that Paladin very easily. Yeah. And so it's going to come down to the VX Druid. I honestly feel like that versus Fatalocity, the Druid might be the weak spot, which is not something that I anticipated saying, but you know, honestly, here we are. I just <laughs> I don't know how he's picking a void otherwise. Yeah, I was about to say... Um... Just looks tough. So here we go. Yeah. This is... Uh... Priest so the priest does have, yeah. The priest does have a Reno in it. Okay, I thought for a second this was his. his yeah, which is really surprising. I, I'm honestly kind of shocked that it has um, a Reno in it. I mean, everything we saw seemed pretty consistent, which this kind of explains the mind control, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I, we were talking about it. You know, we saw a couple cards like I haven't seen a double yet in this deck, and it kind of makes sense of what else has been going on. And knowing that this is a Reno Jackson deck, I mean, it makes it a little different because his lineup is pretty interesting. Like, I might have just like saved this priest as my last class because there's no way it's going to lose to the to the Paladin uh, deck. This also makes that loss to the Paladin deck feel even worse if I'm Fatalocity. If I find out this is a Reno deck and he just had the Entomb in his opening hand, and there's only one in his deck. Yeah, that's that would definitely feel bad. <laughs> he lost to the one of. So, Corn Eternal Sentinel be the opener here, and VX, not really a strong way to answer this. I mean, everything feels pretty gosh darn weak at this point. Mm -hmm. Now, there is a chance for Fatalocity here. I mean, his his hand's not amazing. These two Lightning Bolts are pretty bad, actually, in this matchup to have in the opening hand, but he is going to get a little bit of damage in here. Uh, he has another minion in his hand. He has the Doomhammer and the Rockbiter already in his hand. There's a chance he could maybe get a surprise lethal in this game. Um, it's going to be hard with Arena Jackson sitting in the X-14's hand, but you got to hold on to the hopes that you can find. Yeah, I just didn't see a, a real way to uh, power out this Acolyte of Pain and Hope. And I mean, again, it's just... It's the way that it goes. You, when you're playing these aggro decks, you just hope that Reno is not there. There's no way to play around it. He just had it in his opening hand both games. It's really unfortunate for Fatalocity. And the attack looks pretty clean here with the 3-2. Yeah, I think he's just thinking push of damage, maybe. Yeah. And it, it's pretty awkward that he doesn't get to... I mean, you can almost not... I mean, I guess you can Ancestral Knowledge this turn because you know there's weapon removal in your opponent's deck, but is that something you can think you can readily play around? <sighs> Shadow, Shadow Masses. Yeah. That's a beastly draw. Yeah. That's, uh, that's a game changer here. <laughs> and now we're going to see this Doomhammer come in for only four damage. And I'm saying only four because that's all it's getting. It's not getting put in a museum, but it's getting a little rusty. There's been some acid spilled on it. Yeah, Acidic Swamp Ooze is... A, Ooh, oh, I, but he can't do that. He'd way overdraw. Yeah. He'd way overdraw. Yeah. That'd be, that would be silly. Yeah. Establish Dominance. Just show it to him. You're like, yeah, whatever. I'll just draw these cards. I don't <laughs> care. I have the Reno in my hand. I care about no other cards in my deck. Now, Finley may have some stuff to say about that. I don't even know what you do here in VX's spot. I mean, so outside, ooze, heal, uh, clearly this the, the ooze, but I'm I'm curious if the crazy alchemist just to add something to board has merit here. Hmm. What can you crazy alchemist out of their deck that's actually good for you? Um, there's. Uh, yeah, I guess you can turn over a fling tongue. That's actually good enough for me. I would hold on to it just for that. Uh, mana tide tow them off of a tuscar totemic. Possibly. VX is a, is a much more patient man than I am. That I'll doesn't surprise that. me at all. <laughs> I'll give him that. I don't think you're impatient, but patient is not the word I would use to describe your, your demeanor in card games. I, I'm pretty impatient. Eh. You're never like, come on, man, let's go. But you're like, all right, let's, let's do this. I'm ready. I'm going to attack you. Yeah, I'm pretty impatient. Okay. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna go I'll, out and say it. I'm pretty. I'll impatient. give it to you. 
I'll give it to you. Well, when I'm playing anyway. When I'm playing anyway. Um. But I'm just like watching it. This is a pleasure to watch. I, I love watching the long grueling battles. It's like a true test of of who's got the iron will. I know you like your Game of Thrones references, and that sounded kind of like one. No, it's not. It's just. I know it wasn't. I'm saying it just it just yeah. sounds like one. Who has the iron will to sit the iron throne? <laughs> hey, that one's not too bad. Are you ready to play the only game that matters? Hearthstone Heroes of Warcraft. <laughs> I love Hearthstone Heroes of Warcraft. It's my favorite game. Well, the X-14 is down to 12, but there's a card in his hand that can fix that problem pretty well. Yeah, um, Reno is its pretty awkward here. Not going to lie. It's just <laughs> everything has shaped up so bad for Fatalocity. So do you just use the Crazed Alchemist as well this turn along with Coin? Kill the Flame Tongue, start to clean this board up a little bit. Reno, call it a day, move on to game three. Uh, it's looking like it. I mean, Reno is definitely step number one. And Fatalocity is like, what? Yeah, the reaction was great. <laughs> like, I loved like the look up where he's like, he's like, God, really? <laughs> <laughs> what did I do to deserve this one? It's already been bad enough today. I don't know, man. I don't think it's there. And I feel like we're saying this pretty much every game of Fatal Lost today. You got a feel for this guy. You know, he ran the table in an open tournament to get himself qualified. This tournament, probably the biggest one of his life, and he's just run into the bus saw that is VX14. You know, when you when you feel like you're like, I just refuse to lose to these decks in a tournament, you can craft, you can make a lineup that just can't lose to it, and that's what's happening here. VX14 is like, I refuse to lose this kind of lineup, and Fatalocity just has that lineup. Yeah, I mean, a lot of this, the last two games have quite literally come down to Reno. I mean, the Shaman deck is supposed to defeat these, mm -hmm. uh, but the Reno Jackson draw is is incredibly powerful. Yeah, he has it in every one of his opening hands so far. It's just been brutal for Fatalocity here. I mean, it's it's hard enough to do thirty against some decks that are really defensive. It's really hard to do fifty or sixty. <laughs> it's really hard. I mean, it's real tough. It's so tough that it usually just doesn't happen. <laughs> well, elemental destruction. It's not horrible, but it's not enough. There's even a Justicar in VX's hand. There's yeah. Just, we're going nowhere. We're going nowhere fast. Yeah, you're looking at the fact that there's six cards in your opponent's hand, and he's moving into turn nine at 26, 24 life. <sighs> Feels bad, man. This is the uh, quickest turn we've seen from VX in quite a while. This one has very limited options, I'd say. Yeah, well, you can heal up to 28 against the aggro deck of one card in hand. Well, all right, that's kind of the slightest glimmer of hope possibly well it looks great for fatalocity we just know that it's not <laughs> yeah. i mean it's it's a real shame that the first doom hammer got really rusty and acidic -y, and then the second one just ha happens to try to end up in a museum I mean, that's pretty unlucky for your doom hammers yeah man he's at 28 this one's been over for quite a while yeah, don't blame him for playing it out, though, especially in this spot, in this big of a tournament. Oh, yeah, I mean, I'm never going to blame anyone for playing it out. That's that's silly. Yeah. Is he thinking about not attacking here because of something like Harrison Jones? <laughs> I don't know, actually. I mean, this is kind of... It's kind of weird to see, honestly. I'm curious, like, what the actual game plan is. We'll see who gets destroyed here. He's going to overdraw. Here's that mind control. Oh, there's also a flash heal. Hand is too full. Oh, no. Not power or shield and forbidden shaping. No. What do we, we do? Those. Yeah, we needed those. Let's go back up to 30. Go. 
Just throw the card away. Yeah. It feels so bad to sit on the other side of the table from this. I've been on both ends of these games, and it feels real good on one side and real bad on the other side. It's got to feel really bad for BX. <laughs> yeah. He feels so bad that he's beating his opponent this badly. <laughs> I mean, being this mean. Yeah. This big of a bully. I mean, the shaman just wanted to hug you a few times. That's that's all it was. You just wanted to make friends. I wonder. I, I don't. I don't even know what Fatal Loss is thinking about at this point. Honestly, I don't think he actually has enough damage output left in his deck. Yeah, I mean, I totally agree with you. I just don't think it's there. I mean, look at the way the game's rolling out. Just... Yeah, respect, I guess. Oh, I, I remember someone commenting on Twitter the other day that this is how we make Priest good. You give them a 7-7 seven, seven for 4. <laughs> and we did it. We did it, Reddit. It was easy. It was the easiest game of my life. Greetings, friend. I feel like that friend was a little sarcastic. Yeah, that is total domination. Nothing to give for BX, who's now at 2-0 versus Fatalocity, looking for that repeat performance that he had in the first series. And now one game away from doing it. Um, Druid's the last build. Fatalocity has to 3-0 the Druid build. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you what, I, just again, versus Fatalocity's lineup, I honestly feel like this is his best chance to win, mm -hmm. is 3 0ing the Druid. I, I agree. I definitely think there's a, a chance here. I mean, uh, VX could just draw poorly with Druid for three games in a row. We've seen this happen. Um, it's not the worst matchup for all that's left in his. In fact, he's actually got some pretty good matchups left yeah. uh, for Druid, uh, against Druid. And, uh, I mean, Fatal Austin, you got to feel down in the dumps. You already lost this guy before earlier in the day. Now you're down 2 0. But, I mean, I think this is the best light of the end of the, end of the tunnel situation that you've had. Yeah, I agree. I mean, he's not out of it just yet. He's going to go with Paladin first. And here we go. Yogg's an opening hand. It's You know, I don't think Yogg's quite as scary of a card in this matchup as it is in a lot of other ones. But still pretty darn scary, I'd say. Yogg's always scary, Nathan. I'm always scared of Yogg. <laughs> always? Always. Even after all this time? I'm usually scared of my own. My Yogg's never go good. What's the best Yogg you've ever had? Um, I pyroblasted my opponent uh, twice once with one Yogg and like drew cards and then like stabilized. I've also had some like pretty Did insane pyro wins. Yeah, I pyroblasted my opponent twice. That's insane. How many? How? What was the? How many spells was it? Uh, I don't know if it was double digits, but it was high. It was like at least eight or nine. Uh, I found that it's it's one of those things, you know, it's it, it's obviously not true. You just remember it happens. But a lot of times when you have your bigger yogs, like, you know, eight, nine, ten spells, you get a double in there somewhere. It's usually like double hex, like you were saying on the on the yog. You know? <laughs> I can't do I can't do the voice. I would butcher it. But uh, OK, hex. And uh... <laughs> I mean, that's kind of the way random works, too. I mean, it comes in clumps and does weird stuff like that. Like you ever have you ever done like the coin flipping thing where you had to flip like oh, yeah. hundred coins in a row and you get like seventeen tails in a row? You're like, what? Yeah. You're like, it has to be heads next time. There's there's no way. I'm like, no, that's not how math works. I'm like, that's just no way. Yeah. Ooh, that's a welcome draw. Very good pickup from BX here. Mm -hmm. So I know you and I have had this discussion before. Is this one of the matchups where you actually kind of want to mulligan innervate from your opening hand. I know like you don't want to keep it against like the controlling warrior kind of builds because the game just goes so long. You just want to like actually have stuff to do. You just want to like play something every turn. Is this another matchup where you consider getting rid of getting rid of a card like innervate? Um No. No. Okay. I don't think so. This is this is in this matchup I think that you can put a lot more pressure on your opponent in terms of forcing. Like against a lot of control warrior, they have a lot of great spot removal. 
Paladin's actually really lacking spot removal, and the one thing they make up for it with is the great AoE effect that they have. So in this mm-hmm. matchup in particular, Innervate I think is exceptionally good, whereas like a traditional Control Warrior matchup it's different. Now, there's very few Control Warriors out there anymore, so right. you know, that, that plan is kind of out the window as far as I'm concerned, but uh, the idea is kind of there. Yep, it looks like Innervate into Agent of War here. Azure Drake would be kind of awkward on this board. You do get to draw a card, but you'd probably have to expend your Innervate here just to protect your Azure Drake on board. And then there's a lot of cards that still punish you if anything is left over, plus True Server Champion is just an immediate answer. Um, this puts a big threat into play that you usually need multiple cards to answer out of the Paladin deck here. Usually some form of Humility effect into a Kodo. Uh, something like that, maybe something along with equality here. And I think if you can trade an Ancient of War for an equality, you're probably not that that mad about it. I would say not. I think you're pretty. I think you're pretty happy with it, honestly. Like that's a that's a pretty great spot. <laughs> I mean, it's not getting much better than that. Swipe picked up from VX14 here. Now it would clear the board, but. I would forego any development here this turn. I like. I think we're going to see the coin into a hero power here. Take down this. Yep. Take down this loot hoarder. Make sure we can uh, keep this Azure Drake fresh. Yeah, Azure Drake uh, being as fresh as possible. Always a big threat in this matchup. Of course, the one card you're looking out for is True Silver Champion. Ooh, picked up right there for Fatalocity as well. And this is a game plan Fatalocity wants, right? Just answer your threats every single turn, keep his life total as high as possible, and just keep pecking away with these 1-1s. One yeah, you know, I mean, it's pretty It's pretty fortunate to, for him to actually catch a break <laughs> at some point in these matchups. Yeah, at any matchup ever. You know, it's like, oh my god, something's going my way. And I feel like we may have said it too soon as well, Nathan, because this game could go his way for turn after turn after turn, and then Yogg's gonna happen. And we all know when Yogg happens... Whew, that's a good bumper sticker. We should make that bumper sticker, actually. Yog happens. <laughs> I would totally have that on my car. Like, hashtag Yog happens. Make it happen, science. Oh, definitely do it. I'm just going to have a t-shirt that just says, like, hashtag Yog happens. It's going to be like a pyroblast pointing at your own face. At <laughs> your own face. <laughs> You know, I both late love and hate Pyroblast. It's like my least and most favorite card. It's like the one thing I like doing is just tons of damage off one thing. Yeah. Well, it's such a weird card because it's like, it's not elegant in any way. You know, it's not fancy. It's just 10 mana, 10 damage, gotcha. You know, it's just this big, huge burn spell. Like, there's nothing fancy about it. There's no finesse to it. It's just like, oh, I got you to 10. I got this Pyroblast. Yeah, it's very unsubtle. Yes, that's the, that's the perfect way to put it. It's very unsubtle. But when you're the, the way you play card games, you're not the most subtle person in the world. No, there's no reason to. Just, just yeah. get them. Just beat them up. What are they going to do when you just get them? They're going to get got. That's what they're going to do. Yeah. If you're not going to get them, they ain't going to get got. I'll tell you what. Fatalocity is going to have to get VX or he, three times in a row or he's going to get got. By the way, we are keeping up with the Yogg spell count. We have a tracker going this game. We are at four spells so far for the Jirid, so definitely wants to add a few more on before that Yogg is, you know, just ripe enough to be played. Yeah, plenty plenty to go, though. Yeah, plenty of time. Because you know me, I want to see all the Yogg action I can see. Yeah, finally found a pretty decent swipe here. Cleans up this board pretty nicely, gets to put in a little bit of damage, and uh, you know what? You know, making Living Roots here, it's actually kind of scary if you're the Paladin player here. You have to start to respect stuff like Savage Roar and Whips of the Old Gods that could possibly kill you over the next turn, so this is something that has to be answered right away. Yeah. I mean, it's it's very important that this gets answered. Now, how he answers it is going to be another story. I mean, this is not... This is not an easy situation to answer. I mean, there's a couple of clean ways to do it. You could just pyromancer into consecration, but now you're giving up two possible AOE effects. Well, that's sort of the issue here: is that you can't give up too many of your AOE. If you give it too much of your AOE, that opens up 
the the list of the old god turns. Yeah. So the first consecration here, I don't have a problem with it, but those wild pyromancers are going to need to be reserved. Mm -hmm. And it's actually pretty important that VX starts kind of testing uh, Fatalocity here. You know, it starts prodding him to get these AOE effects out of his hand because at some point in time he needs this list of the old god to do something, and he either needs to find something to pair it with uh, to make it you know good enough. But the problem is he's already used an innervate. There's no coin. So he has to find the other innovate if he wants to do it with something like Soul of the Forest, because that's 11 mana. And if you find something like Power of the Wild, that still gets answered pretty easily out of the, the Paladin deck. Yeah. So Ancient of War, and I'm going to guess that Velocity is going to be okay with Solanus this turn. I mean, it's looking pretty darn good. I think I would have uprooted here. <laughs> no way. Yeah, I know. They're, the other it's, Peacekeeper, obviously. That is miserable. <laughs> When's the last time you uprooted an Ancient of War, Nathan? I, I, and how good did it feel? I, I think it was uh, I think it was at Winners. I uprooted yeah. it on, on that camera, and it was just the right play. Like, I, objectively, yeah. it was actually the right play, which is really rare. It yeah, That is a very rare one, but I think every time I've ever uprooted an Ancient of War, it's gotten in for at least 10. Yeah, More I, mean, it's, I mean, it's very rare that you do it, but when, when the time is right, the time is right. And hey, you know what the you know what the time is almost right for? It's almost right for Yogg. We're at six spells now, Nathan. We're getting there. I'm waiting for it. I'm hungry for it. Ooh, Raven Idol into Raven Idol into Raven Idol. Let's go. Let's get this Yogg big. Let's charge him up. Just all the Raven Idols. I mean. Recycle would be a decent one here. Answer the Sylvanas cleanly. Savagery, Mark of Nature, Feral Rage. Ugh. Well, it's actually not that bad, right? Because you can There's Mark options. of Nature. Well, you can Mark of Nature your opponent Sylvanas and run your Ancient War in. Hmm. I actually kind of like that. Oh, I like this too, but. This is def this has some, like some weak spots to it. Let's see what gets stolen. Uh it's gonna only be a one one. Yeah, I think we're gonna wrath down one of these uh minions here. Try to help keep this Ancient of War healthy on the board. Just to see if it can get in a couple more points of damage here, but it also has got a few answers in his hand. I mean, it's starting to look scary, though. Yeah. You can Wild Pyromancer attack with your weapon here, heal up a little bit. Yeah, I think it's where we're headed. Like yeah. Yep, like the call. This yeah, is where he gets all... to get scary. We're at nine spells right now for... For Yogg, Nathan. And there's a few more left over in this hand if he wants to get it even bigger. I have no time. Ah, this is a tough call. <laughs> you know what? Savannah's is just brutal here. Yeah. Now, there is the Equality Trade Ragnaros turn. And if your opponent doesn't have a mulch, there's a good chance this Ragnaros sticks around for multiple turns here. Hmm. Well, I mean, the problem with that is you're using your other equality. Right. So is that I mean, worth it? VX is down to four cards in his hand. He's at 18. You get to take initiative for, from him and get a Ragnaros in play and a direct shot to the face. You get your opponent down to 10. <clears throat> I don't know. I might have gone and tried to steal a game right there. You think so? Uh, possibly. I mean, uh, I don't know. I think your hand is has a chance to win from here a little bit more. I, if my hand was like one card worse, I think I possibly go for that. That feels really greedy. I don't know. It's close. It really is. I'm a pretty greedy player a lot of times, Nathan. Oh, I know that.
Also, I just think it's going to be difficult to find a really good spot to to, to land a, a Ragnaros over the next few turns. I mean, it's really tough to equality just the Sylvanas. I mean, now, the equality is at least looking decent now. You've gotten something else out of your opponent. Yeah, I mean, you do get some extra value on like what's going on. I mean, you could use your Pyromancer with it, but then what if your opponent has another like Wisp of the Old Gods? You're just like pretty much out of AOE at this point. Oh, he's got to make a decision. He's got to make it now. Looks like he's going to go ahead and just go with the full clear. By the way, Nathan, we're at double digits now. That's 10 spells for Yogg. I mean, it's probably going to get played here. There's just nothing else in VX's hand. Hmm. Do you see it max greed here? You can use your Savage War to kill the, the Acolyte Bane, and make some 1-1s. One -one <laughs> and then it's a hard call the forest. Today. Yeah, and then Soul of the Forest and <laughs> just get max greed. Oof. Yielding initiative this much back over to Fatalocity. This is worst case scenario seeing Ragnaros the Fire Lord here. I mean, now you're pretty much forced into dragging and you didn't play any extra spells last turn. Yeah. I'm sorry, forced into yogging. Sorry. Well, I mean, the, honestly, if you were going to play it last turn... Or if you're gonna play it this turn, you probably should have played it last turn. I mean, that's that's where my mindset's at right now. Yep. Pay attention, class. Don't hate this play either. Just fill up the board as much as possible here. Give Ragnaros the most possible targets. The problem is, Fatalicity can remove a lot of these, but with Soul to Forest, they're gonna come back as two two. So it actually adds power to the board. Wow, this is a really interesting play, actually. I mean, now that I look at it. This makes a lot of sense simply because of the Savage Roar. You get to really keep the pressure on your mm -hmm. opponent. Yeah, uh, Vatalicity has a couple ways to kind of deal with this, though. He's going to be able to draw an extra card here. He's going to be able to remove a few of these 1-1s one off the board and then use a Consecration to kind of remove a decent bit of power off the board here. He can even use it in conjunction with his weapon here to remove the Violet Teacher as well. Now, there's going to be a lot of 2-2s two left over. I don't know if it's going to be enough to kill him with Savage War, though. <clears throat> yeah, he can even, you know, save two life here by using Aldor Peacekeeper. Here's the problem, though. Now Theta Velocity is super low on resources. So is VX14 with the Druid, but there's still that Yogg there. Yeah. And this Ragnaros could just go face. And it does. Wow. Wowie. That one is disgusting. Every time I see that, I just look at it and I go, what just happened? I'm so disappointed, Nathan. <laughs> I'm so disappointed. Time we've seen it in the last two days is like, the Ragnaros shot that ends it in the face of someone potentially just winning the game otherwise. There were 12 spells for that Yogg, Nathan. 12. <laughs> That's why I'm disappointed. There was a dozen, and I'm disappointed, Nathan. I, must protect I haven't got well, my Yogg fix yet tonight. Getting cranky. Yeah, I, I think it's fine, man. I, li I like the rag shots, personally. Oh, yeah, they're great. I definitely welcome, you know, any kind of chaos. And hey, here we go again. This is what we we're talking about with Fatalocity. If these Druid opening hands are really clunky, yeah. I mean, this is the kind of hand that you're worried about dying on like turn five. That's definitely a clunky one. I'll say Fatalocity's hand is not great so far, but he hasn't mulliganed yet. <laughs> That's bad for VX. I mean, Ancient of War is a good card in this matchup. Not on turn one and two. I mean, if you can yeah, play sure. it on turn one or two, it's great. <laughs> well, yeah, it'd be great, but <laughs> unfortunately, yeah. things don't work that way. <laughs> hey, Nathan. That's one spell for Yogg. <laughs> and it already counted up. I love the enthusiasm, at least. Make Hearthstone great again. Let's get some more Yoggs. They also actually kept Argent Horse Rider in his opening hand. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty surprised by that. Not a big fan of that here? Um, no. In my mind, I'm, kind of, I'm trying to wonder why exactly you would keep Argent Horse Rider in your opening hand. Like, it just to me, it doesn't really make much sense. 
Like, what, what are you trying to accomplish for that card in this matchup? Hmm. Yeah, I can definitely agree with you there. I was kind of like think I was trying to find something, you know, <laughs> pair, pair it with an abusive sergeant, but that doesn't actually do much because it kills. Exactly. Like, yeah, it, yeah. You're, you're trying to find a way to, yeah. to think of a reason to keep it. Like, the way you win is the Tunnel Trog Totem Golem opening. That's like the bread and butter of the deck. I don't mind drawing Argent Horse Rider, but. So, what do I want to draw here? I don't think so. Swipe does lead to a clear here, but. You're not really doing much else if you do that. So I definitely like making a 3-2 and using my hero power to take down the Spectral Wolf here. Well, we finally found a use for Argent Horse Rider. It kills a panther. That's what it does. Solid. Whoa. Oh. That's way better. Yeah. We might not be playing Clippity Cloppity after all this turn. Well, I may have spoken too soon. I'm gonna go ahead and use Lightning Bolt, power up this Tunnel Draw, and get in four damage turn. This Flaming Faceless is gonna have to wait until next turn to enter into play here. Ooh, one turn a little early there on uh, Emperor Thorson, but maybe not super unwelcome for next turn. Well, that's a problem. Yeah. Now, if you mulch this turn, you get to go right into Ancient of War. On the next turn, that's a lot of sevens. Honestly, it's looking pretty good at this point. Yeah, it's a full clear. Are there any secrets in the Shaman deck? Because that's a mysterious challenger. <laughs> There's usually a lot of secrets in, uh, in Shaman decks, yeah. I personally tend to play with the Noble Sacrifice Redemption Avenge package. Don't uh, see, you know, I'm not sure if I'm a big fan of the the, the Avenge in this matchup. <laughs> People at home are listening like, what are y'all talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yep, hard to pass up Ancient of War here. Uh, I don't see it happening, that's for sure. I mean, to me, this is just, this is Ancient of War all day. And probably next turn as well. Yeah, I mean, what happens to this? You know Phaelossi's playing Aggro Shaman. There's not, there's not the hexes and stuff in here. Has Phaelossi just left? Hey, man, when you gotta go, you gotta go. It's been a long match. Hey, Phaelossi, it's your turn. Oh, wait. I see movement. Yeah, he's thinking. Camera pan right. There we go. Hmm. So what's the best way for him to get through here? Need to land a jungle? <laughs> it's. I don't know if he's getting through this. I mean, this is probably a create board tension moment to me. Yeah, you've already seen one swipe out of the X here. I mean, if the juggle lands, he can actually clear this with Lava Burst, Trade, Trade. And then you can develop behind this. You get a Totem. I'm sorry, not, you get a Totem Golem. Excuse me. And, uh, yeah, not the worst board I've ever seen. But you just expended so many resources and so many minions to get through an Ancient of War. And, uh, here's his brother. Yeah, VX has managed to fully recover at this stage. That is bad news for Fatalocity. I mean, it's like like one more turn to go before he's like completely over over the hub. I mean, all of his options are bad here. You have to fling some totem and attack all your minions in. Or you have to attack all your minions in, elemental destruction, and then I guess you still fling some totem, maybe? Like Oh, this, this feels real bad, man.
Yeah, this is rough. It's really it's rough. Like it's possibly just going to be a pass. What are you hoping to draw next turn? Also, if one of your minions or two of your minions get removed here without putting damage in Ancient of War, I don't think you can possibly win. I would definitely be Raven Idling here for a spell and just try to end this game on the spot. Try to pick up Swipe. I, I think I like the Wisp of the Old Gods better, honestly. Like, you get to cut into the two on this way. I guess this is actually really good, too, yeah. No, this is actually really good as well. I'm just so greedy with Raven Idol. Yeah, the two one is definitely, it's definitely right here. Well, this is a full clear. Followed up by a mysterious <laughs> challenger. Now that is a pretty interesting and awesome series of plays. Elemental destruction into mysterious challenger. Haven't called that one yet before. I have no time. It doesn't even get any secrets. What kind of deck is this? Yep, Sylvanas and Meyer Keeper is going to add a lot of pressure to this. One of his uh, un, un overload me cards would be very welcome here. I don't, I don't really know if if that can even get him out of this. I mean, just the board pressures mounted this huge point. I mean, well, maybe it can. That's a big one. So this is a good draw here. I mean, you could actually create a ton, a ton of board tension here by playing on all your minions and just pushing a ton of damage. But are you worried about dying on the way back? There's 10 power in play. I don't, I don't know if there's... There's like maybe some three card combinations to kill you. I mean, you can push 10 damage here and put the Shaman player at 10. I'm sorry. Eight. Oh, he doesn't have mana to play the Abyss Sergeant. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, Ooh. baby. It's only five right now. Yeah, we're at, we're at five count for Yogg. But the most important part is... Does he have to yog this turn? He can remove a lot of power from this board. Yeah, I don't think he has to yog quite yet. Oh, he spotted something. That's just there's no way it's lethal. No, he just it's has a he has a, a good clear here. Two. Okay. Ah, I see what's going on here. Yeah, he's gonna take down this one one. Yeah, use your power taking this one one. Attack a Sylvanas into the yeah, and there are no minions yeah. left on the velocity side of the board. I don't, I don't know if I like taking out the... Trying to cut out the... Oh, it's, it's a 6-6 six, six Sylvanas. I'm dumb. Um, yep. I thought for some reason this was a 5-5 five, five Sylvanas. Even post-Power of the Wild, I was like, wait a minute. And I was like, oh, never mind. It's just... That's just it. <laughs> it's just perfect. Wait a minute. If he didn't totem, could he have gone Finley into Life Tap? Draw? No, he couldn't have. Ooh. Ooh. Probably some of the worst. I, I guess there could be a priest dagger, here, power take here a dagger too. Up, take a dagger yeah. up and open. Or open and pray in. I wishing. guess the math does matter here. Like maybe armor it buys you an additional turn. Yeah, but what are you drawing into with that turn? Session knowledge, Doomhammer, Rockbite or something. I mean, I don't even know if he has two ancestral knowledge in his in his, uh, in his deck. We've already seen one. Yeah, I'm. I don't. Know. I mean, that's what he's doing the math about. I think here is figuring out whether or not it's worth it to to go for the armor up, and maybe the armor up does buy another turn. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15, staying out fifteen damage on board. Um, and he goes to twenty eight this way. Mm. Yeah, I don't think it any, does. Any any heal spell here absolutely seals the game. Savage uh, the savage war ended. I uh, don't. Maybe it does. That's ten damage. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, plus 10, 25, 26 damage available. So it's going to be Nourish first. Living Roots gets it done. Yep, there it is. All right, that is 28, Wait. is it? No, he doesn't have the Mana to Hero power again right oh, now. Oh, right, right, right. So 4, right, 5, yeah. 6, 7. Yeah, he's realizing he's one short. <laughs> or one Mana five, short. Five, six, yeah. He's one man off, literally one mana. Yep. Wait for no one. Wow. Is Yogg getting big, Nathan? 
Never gonna happen this game, but. Yep, just trade, trade. Go ahead, if you got 11, you got me. Yeah, I don't think there's a two card combination that could. Oh, well, I guess if you have Totem, you could roll Spellbar Totem, which he doesn't have anymore. Leroy with could... Fury. Yeah. <laughs> well, we found one of the pieces, but. Yeah, not, not the other one. Yeah. And He's not dead on board, it. though. He's not yeah. dead on board, so you'll see him continue to play, but. It's pretty much going to be the end of this one. Yep, Savage Roar is going to get this one done, and. VX14, he's found his way out of the loser's bracket. He's going to move on. Yeah, takes down Fatalocity in back-to-back -back sets. Just bad stuff. For Fatal Fatal was, a nice, was a nice wave here to all the people at home. Congrats for coming this far, man. You did win an open. You put on a really good show. Uh, this was... Uh, you just ran into the bus saw here today. I mean, this yeah. was hard to watch. I mean, honestly, I don't think I've quite seen dominance like... Yeah. Like VX had in this particular matchup, and I mean a lot of it does stem to from the uh, the way that the game kind of pans out versus this matchup. Uh, just mm -hmm. the fact that his lineup is so much built to handle this uh, this control style lineup that Fatalocity's built. You know, it's it's pretty rare that you'll see that happen, and VX ends up advancing because he runs into Fatalocity twice. I mean, that's sort of the nature of the GSL style brackets is mm -hmm. you know there's both sides of it, and the exit every step of the way was just totally dominant. I don't I just feel like there was no way for a fatal to win this series. Like honestly, it's very rare that I think they say that, but it, it just wasn't there. Yeah, I completely agree with you. He just ran into a brick wall here in this matchup and like we said, you know, you weren't the biggest fan of the uh of the lineup, you know, cuz if you run into a normal one like we saw in his earlier match where he just kind of got steamrolled really quick, um you're going to run into that kind of problem, but if you get it right, you know, if you run into a couple lineups like this, I mean, you just pretty much won a tournament without even having to try anymore. Like, you yeah. know, you just have to go through the motions of playing the games because everything's so good. So, um, you know, it's it's a risk-reward kind of thing. You know, you're taking a high risk, but if you get it right, you pretty much win the tournament on the spot. Yeah, and now he's in a position to do it. So that's going to wrap up mm -hmm. day one for us. Uh, day two is tomorrow, and then on Sunday, we're going to have the last day of this event. It's at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern time. On all the days right here on this channel, twitch.tv slash one nation of gamers. Uh, throw the channel a follow. Uh, Pax Prime is coming up as well, so I'm certain you'll want to catch that one. And uh, we also have the other two days of the feature going on. Also throw a follow to at Onog Esports on Twitter, at myself at That's Admirable, and at the Tan and Grace. Um, so Fatalocity, not getting the job done here. VX just dominant in those two matches. Uh, I think it's going to pretty much wrap, it, wrap today up. Uh, do you have any words you want to add uh, before yeah. we... Go to a close here, Tannen. Yeah, just congratulations to VX14. You know, great show today. And congratulations to Fatal Aussie. It's unfortunate that, you know, it comes to an end here, but it's a good stepping stone to, to better things in the future for him. And that's the best way that he can look at it. Yeah, I totally agree with you. So that's going to do it. Remember to join us tomorrow at 4 p.m. Pacific time, 7 p.m. Eastern. Before we come to a close, we do want to thank the sponsors that make this entire event possible. Uh, Geico being the title sponsor for the entire series. If you insure anything, and I mean anything at all, there's a chance that Geico can save you money. Excuse me, 3 p.m. Um, Eastern Time, not 7 p.m. Excuse me. It is 3 p.m. Eastern Time that's right. taking place, which is noon Pacific. Forgive me for that. My schedule is off. I'm thinking the Thursday, Friday schedule, not the Saturday, Sunday schedule. So scratch what you just heard. 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific Time. Um, but yeah, Geico. If you insure anything, Geico can save you some money. Head over to the website, geico.ong.gg, and get yourself a free quote. Uh, while you're there, you can sign up to win a CyberPower Gamer Extreme 1000 PC. If you need a new rig, guess what? They're giving one away. All you have to do is head over to the website and sign up. Also, thanks to uh, Video Game Voters Network, a grassroots network or a grassroots organization of gamers encouraging the esports community to get out there and vote in the 2015 election. Uh, they also host contests and giveaways and that sort of thing, so make sure you check them out on the website, uh, videogamevoters.com, and to Razor for hopping on board. So uh, thank you, for every everyone, for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow. In the meantime, you can have a good morning, have a good night, wherever you are. And we'll see you next time.